Welcome to the Sagu Sports Network from beautiful Lumpkin Stadium on a gloomy day here in Waxahachie, Texas. We are set for some more Sooner Athletic Conference Sagu football here in Waxahachie, Texas. I'm Adam Ferguson, joined by my partner, as always, Tim Roberts. We're also joined by NAIA F-Ball writer, Corey Thorpe. Corey, how are we doing today? Doing good. How about y'all? Good. We're It's a little humid here, but we're, we're pushing through. Tim, how are we doing? Yeah, doing great. Obviously, homecoming Saturday, so the stakes oh, are yeah. always just a little bit higher. Crowd's going to be a little bit more into it. You got, you know, multiple generations of fans showing up, so it's always a fun Saturday. Even if it is a little cloudy and humid, uh, it's still a great Saturday. We're going to hear from some of our, our lovely students partaking in the pregame festivities down in the parking lot for the, for the homecoming uh, activities here today yeah. uh, for, for SAGU. Now, uh, let's talk big picture things first. Let's go NAIA level, and that's why we have Corey here today. Uh, we always like to start the conversation uh, with the top 25. Now, uh, it's a little different. We've talked about this before. They do it every two weeks instead of every week, which we have talked about. We're not a fan of that. We yeah. wish it was. It's a little more interesting when we get to see every week updates. But Corey, walk us through some of the top 25, some of the things that you like, and maybe some of the things you're a little disappointed with in the most recent polls. Well, at the top, I mean, the the top four or five schools are, are pretty. They're going to be there. Let's Northwest Morning Side Grand. Those are the schools that are really going to be We've got a little bit of polls going on with the coaches there. Reinhardt drops to 6 But Bethel of Tennessee pulled the upset. Doesn't get into the top twenty-five. Uh, same thing happens. Falk drops completely out of the hole after the top five. It's a little hot. It's just like that. Uh, but I think they'll get they'll get fixed as, as the poll shakes itself out as play continues. As the poll shakes itself out, yeah, we like it. It does take a long time to get to the you know the finale of the top teams. We see some teams in the top fifteen at this point who probably you know may or may not be there at the end of the season. It always shakes things up uh, as time progresses. But now let's talk specifically about uh, Corey one one specific conference who is saying that they are head and shoulders above the rest. And Tim, you can win here as well. The Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference, Southwestern, however, says they're the best conference in the entire country. Southwestern says they're the best team in the best conference in the entire country. Uh, Corey, what do you have to say about that claim that Southwestern has? Well, really, they need to take a look at both the uh, Mid-South and the Mid-States. Uh, the Mid-States has got this gauntlet of teams. Two playing today, Indiana Wesleyan and Concordia, that are some of the best teams in the entire nation, to say nothing of Marion, who's in the national championship. And just a couple of teams ago. Got the uh, South three divisions deep. I mean, you've got Lynch, you've got Georgetown, you've got Kaiser coming in the line. I have to take the loss as one of the better teams in the end. I think it might get a couple of teams in, 
uh, at, at some point, but I don't know that they are the best conference in the nation. Tim, what do you look at as far as the Kansas Collegiate uh, Athletic Conference? Yeah, I mean, really, by what Corey said, the mid-states, that's kind of the, I mean, it's the blue chips. You think right. of that as basketball yeah. country, but it, every year, that's who's at the top. I mean, even it gets brutal to play there. That you're right. always, We're always watching uh, live look-ins <laughs> in October, November. Yeah. There's sleet on the ground. That's just the brutal gauntlet you have to go through. Right. The, the Kansas, Kansas Collegiate Conference, they, they're there. They're within the realm but it's got to take some success. It feels like every year Southwestern's in the conversation and they're always bumped in the first round, maybe second round of the playoffs. You got to prove it. If you want to be, if you want to say you're the best, there's a good way to prove it. Make it to the semifinals. Make right. it all the way to the finals. Don't lose in the first round. And then that's when you gain respect next year in the polls. Well, I got to say, uh, Corey, we were, and, and me and Corey, and you were talking before uh, we started here, we're looking for ways to, to make the NAIA better. And I'm a fan of statements like this from <laughs> players, teams, yeah. schools, whatever. It does shake things up a little bit. I'm a fan of it. Get the pot stirring, oh, if yeah. you will. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, flex on some people. Get out there. <laughs> you know, yeah, a little bit because sometimes it can feel so separated. Right. Go ahead and, you know, start some interconference rivalries oh, and yeah. stuff. And if, you know, if you want to make the NAIA a more competitive league in general that's how you start that so no i have no problem with uh, with some bold <laughs> statements i probably have some bold statements on my own coming here in around 10 minutes that are going to probably burn me later this week we're used to that yes yeah, so I'm, I'm getting really good at those but you, you got to put yourself out there and so i, I love it uh, i just you know go win the games. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, we are ready to actually throw it to our sideline reporter who is actually doing a little parking lot duty right now. She's catching up with some of our lovely fans in the Sagu crowd for homecoming jazz. Let's see what they have to say. Down to you. I'm here with Denzel at the tailgate party. Denzel, it's been two years since the Sagu homecoming and how does it feel to be back here as well as being a part of the homecoming royalty? I mean, being part of the royalty is, is just an amazing experience. Shout out to Suko for putting this on. Also, SAA for putting this on as well. Um, I mean, being a senior, uh, missing homecoming for the past two years has been kind of something that, you know, bringing somebody together. And so being all together as a team, I mean, you see all this fellowship back here. And so I'm excited just to see where this goes today. Finally, what is your score prediction for today's game? Uh, my score prediction, if I could put anything on it, uh, I would just say maybe 15 to 45 today. Thank you. Yes, Thank you, Jazz. 45-15. That is, that is quite a blowout. I, 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 I mean, as Sagu people, we kind of hope to see that. But, <laughs> Tim, the closer games are a little bit more fun to call. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, we, we always love a buzzer beater <laughs> around here in football or basketball. So, yeah. But I've, it, Denzel might be right. We'll, uh, we'll talk about that here in a minute. A little bit. Uh, so let's move on to, uh, we talked about some of the, the, the best conferences in the NAIA. Let's talk about one that we personally, it, there may be a little bit of bias here, but we personally think that uh, is getting a little bit slighted in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Why are they not getting any love? Corey, I'm going to start with you as our NAIA expert. Well, the Sooner, like you talked about the KCAC earlier, they've really got to uh, you know, make some noise in the playoffs. I mean, even ACU last year coming, coming out and, and beating uh, up on the Sooner, Goes over to Florida and Kaiser just up and down the You have to do it in the playoffs. And how how about Ottawa, Corey? So Ottawa comes in this week at number twelve. They're they're cracked the top fifteen. They're on the verge of cracking the top ten. They're undefeated at this point in the season. How do they stack up against the rest of that the the rest of the, of the eleven teams in front of them? I really think Ottawa has a really nice team this year. I mean, running the ball, passing the ball, both their offense is definitely worth keep an eye on. It's really just going to be a, a question of whether their their defense is going to be able to stack up when they get sent either to the Frontier or to North Star or to the Midwest to go play some of these teams like that. Those, those teams at the frontier, they get sent up north. Those are no slouch teams. They don't get a lot of love because they beat up on each other. But there's some really good squads over there. And if they get sent up there, it's going to be a tough road to hoe. Now, we, we see a lot of Ottawa. We also see a lot of Arizona Christian. Now, we talk Sooner Athletic Conference today at 9 p.m. Central Time, 7 o'clock in Arizona. Of course, we get the Ottawa versus Arizona Christian matchup. Now, Tim, I'm going to use a term that you like to use yeah. frequently, the de facto championship game. Is that what we're feeling like today? 
it may not be the de facto championship game because of Langston, which we'll talk yep. about in a second. Now, they've been able to feast on the lower half. They have the top half coming for the rest of the season. What it is, though, is it's Arizona Christian's last shot. They right. already have that one conference loss to Texas Wesleyan. If they lose today against Ottawa, Arizona, on the road against Ottawa, Arizona, then they can pretty much count their chances out. They win. Then they have the tiebreaker. They're right back in front. So in that sense, yes, it's, Air, it's Arizona <laughs> Christian's de facto championship game. Right. Uh, but we have to wait and see who this Langston team is, which I think is our next topic. Absolutely. Right yeah, I do want to talk to you, Corey, a little bit about Langston. Uh, we, Tim and I, have our opinions of Langston. We've seen Langston a lot. They're primarily Sagu's. They're the Sagu's rival. In the heyday of Sagu football, competing for Central States Football League championships, Langston was always in the way. They were always the team that was there, and Sagu just could not get over the hump. Langston seems to have taken a step back after the past couple of seasons. Now, of course, COVID kind of messed everything up yeah. last year. But how do you see Langston now as they come back and are currently undefeated? I really, I, I want to see more of Langston because I really do like what they're putting up offensively and defensively. They're impressive. But again, can you do it against the teams that are going to be on the top half of the Sooner. I mean, can you do it against Sagu? Sagu always has a good defense. Are you going to be able to put up 50, 60 points on Sagu? I just don't, I, I don't know that they'll be able to. Same thing with playing Ottawa and Arizona Christian. Once I see them play kind of those three teams there, I'll be able to form a, a stronger opinion. But right now, I'm really in a wait and see approach towards Langston. Yeah, I think we, we all kind of are. Like Tim said, they, they played the bottom half of the, the conference to start the season. So their test, you know, kind of starts now. So let's move into the rest of what the Sooner Athletic Conference looks like for this week. Now, Corey, we like to do a thing where we predict the matchups. We got your picks earlier in the week. Now, Tim is 6-3. and three. Myself, I'm 9-0. and oh. I've not lost yet. And our, our guests, our media guests, are also undefeated. So it's on your shoulders to try to keep that moving this week. But I'm going to start with the uh, first matchup that we're going to talk about. Just talked about Langston. They go uh, on the road to take on Lyon. I'm picking Langston. And uh, I just want to hear kind of, Tim, what, what you've got uh, for, for this game. Same thing we talked about, obviously. That, that, that bottom half. Lyon is a better team than necessarily who they played recently, but definitely picking Langston. They absolutely have to win this game because, yep. as we talked about, after that, there's not an easy game left on their schedule. It's, right. it's Wesley, and it's Sagu, it's Arizona Christian, it's Ottawa, Arizona. So they absolutely have to win this one, and I'm definitely picking them to win it. How about you, Corey? I'm actually sort of disappointed in Lyon. A lot of years, they bring back a lot of good talent. And they just haven't been able to put it together this year. I'm taking Langston in this matchup. So we all are the same on that one. I think that was was a relatively easier easier one to call. Now let's move on to uh, Sagu's up the up the highway rival, Wayland Baptist, going on the road to Texas Wesleyan down here in Fort Worth. Uh, I've got Texas Wesleyan. I'm taking the Rams. Uh, I think their football program is on the up. I think it's on the rise. Uh, I think that they kind of handle a more disappointing Wayland Baptist team than we thought they were going to be this season. Tim, how about yeah. you? Corey just mentioned it with uh, Lyon. I've yeah. kind of been disappointed with, with Wayland this year. They've always been such a hard right. team to play. They have not felt that way this year. And as we've said for weeks, for seasons now, Texas Wesleyan is inevitable. Yep. They're inevitable. Yes, they, they are. <laughs> they care too much about sports there in Fort yep. Worth to not be one of the top teams in this conference. They're, after, they're winning today for sure. Absolutely. How about you, Corey? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Marvel theme on that. Uh, <laughs> Texas Wesleyan is on the come up, and I think they continue to come up against Wayland Baptist. The Rams are inevitable. So we agree there as well. So now let's move on to OPSU at Louisiana College. Two newer teams to the Student Athletic Conference slash Central States Football League. Uh, OPSU on the road at Louisiana College. I've got OPSU. Tim, how about you? Got OPSU as well, but as we've said in recent weeks, Louisiana College has had a tough schedule to start yes. this season off. Yeah. They narrowly lost to these Lions at home in the opening game. So, I mean, it, it could be really tight. It could be really tight, uh, but, you know, Panhandle State, they're, they're, they're a brutal team to play. They're more brutal to play on the road, for sure, up right. there in Oklahoma, but definitely picking them today. Corey? Yeah, Louisiana College is going to get a win at some point. Today is not going to be that day. Oklahoma <laughs> Panhandle State wins this one. And there we have it. We all agree again. Now, Texas College on the road out of conference at Lane College. Now, we're very familiar with Texas College. We're not very familiar with Lane College. Doing my little research that I think that Lane College is going to beat Texas College in this one. Yeah, uh, same same thing. Those out-of-conference games are hard enough when we're calling for SAG. Right. Hard to pick it, but definitely picking Lane today. Corey, how about you? Yeah, took a look at Bill Connolly's SP Plus for 
uh, lane, and, and I really think that this lane team is going to be able to beat up on Texas College. Well, there you have it. We, we're all in agreement this week. It's like you guys are trying to catch – well, Tim, you're trying to play a little bit of catch-up to our <laughs> guests and myself. Now, let's move on to the game of the week, Arizona Christian on the road at Ottawa, 9 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Arizona Time. I've got Ottawa in this one. I think they stay undefeated, and I think they climb a little bit more in the poll. Tim, how about you? You know, some of this is math. i got to look at those standings, <laughs> our standings. And if I'm going to climb back in this, I got, I got to make some waves. I don't think this is a huge wave, though. This is a toss-up game. Just based on watching Sagu play both these teams, Sagu almost played identical football games. We'll talk about this probably here in a little bit when we do yeah. the Sagu uh, preview today. They played almost identical football teams. These two teams are so evenly matched. Knowing my position, I, it's, I'm either digging a bigger hole or I'm taking one ladder rung up. I'm going Firestorm today to pull off wow. the miniature upset. The they're, the upset. they're essentially ranked number 26 in the nation. Yeah. So these are two borderline ranked teams playing each other. And I think the Firestorm have a lot more to play for knowing a loss almost eliminates them from conference. I, I, I think so. It's, it's a, it is definitely a toss-up. Corey, how about you? Man, I, I love the, uh, the upset pick there, Tim. I just... <laughs> I don't know that Arizona Christian is going to be able to pull it. Austin McCullough and Ottawa keep on rolling down the road. And then the last matchup, of course, is the one here in Waxahachie. Arkansas Baptist on the road, homecoming against Sagu. Uh, I've got Sagu in this one. I think they're going to take it to, to Arkansas Baptist. Yeah, Tim? Got Sagu as well. Uh, probably pretty handily. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Yeah, match. how about you, Corey? Corey, can you hear me? I think we lost. I think we lost Corey. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm, oh, he, I'm back. He I, He's back. Okay. I could not. I could not hear y'all. Um, <laughs> so I have no idea what y'all said. But uh, Arkansas our, Baptist yeah. uh, is is going to be in for another whale of a, of a game where they're going to uh, be on the wrong side of it. Segu gets in. They're they're uh, too deep and. Uh, sees what their three and four deep looks like. Say who wins big. <laughs> well, there we have it. A little bit of discrepancy, just the one game, Arizona Christian over at Ottawa for you, Tim. Uh, but I think Jazz, our sideline reporter, parking lot reporter right now, caught up with another SAGU student talk about homecoming. Jazz, down to you. What does SAGU mean to you? SAGU means so much to me. Uh, my wife and I are both uh, alumni, and now I get to be there work there. I'm the assistant dean of the graduate school, and so it's just great to come back home, but it means so much to me. I'm a 2011 graduate, so it, it was a great experience for, for all of us, for my uh, wife and I, and now we're back with our family, so it's, it's a great place to be. It means so much to me. What's your final score prediction for today's game? Oh, SAGU all the way. I'm going to say 27-10. And also, what is your final score prediction for today's game? <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jazz. Tim, I, I just got to say, I love dogs. It, uh, we don't deserve dogs. That's if, amazing. If that dog beats me in predictions this year, <laughs> uh, I retire. I retire from predicting. Uh, so so here, here's hoping I can at least stay ahead of the dog, although I think the dog picks Sagu, so we're probably even in that sense. Wearing the shirt, I assume it picks Sagu. <laughs> he's but, a homer. You know, he's, uh, absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Jazz, again, for catching up with some of our wonderful students in the parking lot. Uh, Corey, we got a little bit of time here. Uh, we talked about where you come from, NAIA F-Ball. Um, give us a little bit about what that is. I want you to plug your program. What are you looking at, Corey? Yeah, absolutely. We are a two-man media outlet out of uh, the panhandle of Florida. Um, my my buddy John played offensive line at Faulkner and uh, just wanted to start a media outlet that gave the NAI kids uh, the, the same experience that the big college gets. And so we are, um, you know, doing our own media poll. You see it along your bottom line every week. Um, we do our own live show on YouTube. You can find us at youtube.com slash NAIAFball. You can see our poll right there. So it just gives another set of eyes on um, on the top 25. And you'll see some a little bit of a difference in along the bottom of, of that as we have a couple different teams there. Um, we also on Saturdays, if you want to keep up with the scores going on around the nation, follow us on Twitter. We are constantly updating on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash NAIAF ball. We're everywhere. You are on social media. Find us, follow us. We are always there talking NAI football. It's what we love to do. Um, it's, it's a welcome respite sometimes for, uh, for those of us whose, uh, 
FBS teams aren't very good. <laughs> I can't relate to that. I'm sorry, Corey. I can't relate. No, but thank you, Corey. What a professional. I didn't even have to ask him to plug his social medias. What a professional. <laughs> Corey, it's been a pleasure having you today. Uh, we look forward to catching up with you in the future. We'll, uh, we'll let you know how your picks pan out. I think we're both going to be kind of looking at that because we're on the same page here. But again, thank you, Corey. That is Corey Thorpe with NAIA FB, uh, F-Ball. And then you can find them on YouTube and Twitter if you want to keep up with what they're doing. It's a great team. Like I said, it's a two-man team. It's a lot of work for two men. So uh, give, give them a look. Give them a follow. Uh, for us, Tim, we're going to go to a quick break. Uh, but don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with some keys and some breakdowns of the SAGU Arkansas Baptist game right here on the SAGU Sports Network. At AGCU, we are committed to forging relationships centered around faith and finance. Our purpose is to provide financial solutions to help you succeed while we tithe 10% of our annual earnings to ministry and community organizations. Your mercy is never ending, your kindness never fading, Jesus, you're always with me, you're always with me. Welcome back to the SAGU Sports Network. Thank you again, Corey. Uh, he's kind of stuck in limbo there for us for a second, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure we'll get that figured out. But thank you again, Corey uh, Thorpe with NAIF Ball. Now, Tim, back to us here uh, in Waxahachie. Let's talk about the matchup uh, between the Buffaloes and the Lions here on homecoming uh, here at Lumpkin Stadium. Let's start with the players to watch. We're going to start with SAGU. I'm going away from my norm here, Tim. You know, I, I know it hurts you I, to do it that. It hurts a little bit, but I think I make up for it a little bit. You'll see in a second. But uh, let's talk about the 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 probably the best player on offense outside of the quarterback play so far this season in Keaton Dudick, who is uh, the starting running back. He's the workhorse. He's been the guy uh, both rushing. He's got a lot of catches, too. He's just really a, a double-edged sword for the SAGU offense is, if I do my math right, seven touchdowns away, rushing touchdowns from tying the single season record set by J.P. Lowry with 13. Uh, he's got six on the season. Today is a day, Tim, that he could possibly pad that if he picks up, it, and it's not unrealistic, three or four today. Yeah, he could absolutely come very close to that J.P. Lowry record that we saw set here you yes. know, a couple of seasons ago. But he is such a dual threat. Catching the ball out of the backfield last week in their narrow, narrow loss against Arizona Christian, he caught the pass in the final seconds that got yep. Segu down to the seven-yard line. And I was watching that game live. <laughs> He was one move away from getting right. in the end zone and sending that game to overtime or possibly a two-point conversion attempt to win it all. It was a, a crazy comeback by Sagu to get oh, in that yeah. position. Absolutely. Amazing game. But yeah, he, he is a playmaker. He had Arizona, he had the firestorm on their heels at the end of that game. So absolutely a guy to watch, especially today. He could, he could do some feasting. Keep an eye out of the guy out of the backfield, for sure, for Sagu. Uh, let's move up to, to up front. And I haven't done this yet this season, <laughs> but the offensive line, I'm not picking one player out of the five starters, but the offensive line, today, if Sagu goes up big, an offensive lineman's favorite thing to do is run block. They love going downhill, getting at people, attacking people. Now, they're going to have a field day if that's the case. Sagu gets up big. They're trying to run clock in the second half, keep people healthy, just simple offense. Watch out for this, for this line. Also, on the other side, I, I can't not talk about the quarterback. Now, this offensive line, if we, did, if we checked our numbers right, two sacks allowed this season. Only two. They've kept Barlow relatively upright. Now, Barlow does a good job of extending plays, and to only be sacked twice for a, for a quarterback that can get out in the field and run, that's incredible. Yeah, that stat was posted. We were talking about it, and we were, first we were like, is this for real? Right. And I started recounting. I'm like, I don't remember him being sacked at home. Right. Unfortunately, one of those two sacks was the last play of the game last week. Uh, <laughs> tough time to take it. Uh, of course, uh, Firestorm were bringing him heavy blitz at oh, that yeah. point. Yeah. But, yeah, they have done a great job Job, especially your Barlow can get out there. They always, you know, they stay in their lanes. They don't let right. crazy things happen. They give him those few seconds. Credit Barlow's quick release ability too, and the receiver's getting open. And it all plays together, but it all starts with that offensive line. If somebody's breaking free straight out of the snap, 
nothing's going to happen. So these guys have done their job and the run blocking as well. They've been creating holes uh, for, for Duduk to feast on all, all season and they could have a real fun day today. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And lastly, we'll move to the defensive side of the ball. Uh, a name that we call quite frequently and, it, and for good reason, he is the all-time sack leader here at Sagu. Actually set that, that record last year. So everything this year was just kind of a gravy on top yeah. of that record. And that is uh, the man with the hair, Drake Rodriguez, uh, in a game where you are most likely going to be up big and the other team is going to have to throw the ball. I think he's going to put that hair in a ponytail, <laughs> pin the ears back, and get after the quarterback today, Tim. I don't know. I mean, you're talking about Keaton Dudek wanting to, you know, catch up with the record. Drake Rodriguez is thinking, I'm, nobody's taking this record. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Go ahead and, and just add everything you can to it. And yeah, it, it's inevitable. Anytime there's a big play, Coming out of that pile, whether he was the first guy there or the third guy there, is Drake Rodriguez. He has such a nose for where the play right. is. He's always in on it, no matter what. And if he's not in on it, it means he probably was double teamed to let the other guy get in on it. He is a dominant player down there. Uh, you, you just love to see that yep. kind of weapon on defense. And keep an eye out for, I know it's hard to tell, but keep an eye out for number 50. The hair covers his number, but you see the hair, you see Drake Rodriguez. Now, exactly. Tim, let's move to the other sideline. Now, Arkansas Baptist is in the Student Athletic Conference. It is their probation year. So this is not a conference game. Of course, there will be votes and stuff to happen after the season to allow them to come in. So this season is more of a test yeah. for them. Now, we don't know much about the Buffaloes, but give us what you have as far as their players to keep an eye on today. Yeah, a quarterback, uh, Christian Gamage. Obviously, if they're going to have any shot of hanging with this game, it starts with the quarterback. Uh, yep. you, you have to have good quarterback play. You can't have Tons of turnovers, and any turnover in this game is just, it feels like a 14 point swing as soon as it happens. So, Christian Gamage can have to play a very clean game, uh, you know, do, do a good job of getting that ball out fast because you know that the Sagu defense is going to be coming after him. Second guy, Jamar Guy, uh, he had two <laughs> touchdowns against Tabor you know, in game one, which is their best game of the year so far. Uh, so, he needs to find a way to get open. Uh, just make something happen out there in the field. Uh, I'll give that in a second. Just how, how you approach a game like this right. if you are the Buffaloes. But yeah, just do everything you can. Fight through it. Uh, try to get past. These Sagu corners and DBs have been really good at going one-on-one. -on -one. So try to prove something against them. Go up and get a catch or two. Uh, and last, uh, Deborah Washington, outside linebacker, has been pretty much one of their key playmakers on defense this year. Obviously, they've had to make a lot of tackles. Uh, they've, they've been on defense a lot. It hasn't been easy for them, but he's been in there anytime he can trying to dis disrupt these offensive attacks coming against them. Uh, so that's a guy you got to watch to, you know, right. keep Tur turn a turn what could be a 15 yard gain to a five yard gain or oh, yeah. a three yard gain keep yeah. sagu from just crushing the chains all day absolutely well that's going to be the guys we're going to keep an eye on here uh don't go anywhere we're actually going to go down to jazz who caught up with another student another uh, another homecoming lovely celebration student here uh in waxahachie jazz down to you i'm here at the sagu homecoming tailgate the fans are ecstatic they're ready for a big game today it's this nice 75 degrees there has been some on and off overcast but we are on a turf field, so it should dry up quickly. The Lions are so ready for today's big homecoming game today. Back to you, Adam. Thanks, Jazz. I was ready for a student and got hit with a student section. Yeah. Look at that. Well, you heard the weather report. It's about 75. It's a little humid, but there are some breezes, you know, through throughout the day. So we're looking forward to a beautiful afternoon of football. Um, Tim, let's go to some of the keys of the game. The players will, who will be executing these keys that we're going to talk about. We'll start with Sagu. Uh, the first one I think is necessary in any game, whether you're going up a, against an opponent you're going to beat or one that's a tougher game. It's controlling the clock. you got to keep the pace on offense. There's no reason that this game should be close. And if it is a blowout, out. Let's see some 13, 14, 15 play drives. So you're kind of just four yards in a cloud of dust. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. No, yep. Pretty much, yeah. Repeating <laughs> the same thing. Not, not yep. much to say about uh, controlling the clock. That's the it's the oldest uh, oldest trick in the book. In it really football. is. <laughs> how, you keep the you keep the defense on the on the sideline. You keep the offense on the field. You're going to win games. Yeah. Uh, second, don't go against the status quo. When I say the status quo, Arkansas Baptist in the last three games, 12 total points. Four points a game, not even averaging a touchdown a game. That's not going to win you many games. So Sagu cannot allow this Buffaloes team to score. Keep that going. Don't let anything else change uh, against the Buffaloes. And then lastly, uh, don't fall victim. We talk about trap games. Everyone knows the term. Everyone, know, everyone knows what it is. This could feel like a trap game. It's a team you should beat. You're at home. Just don't let it happen. It's not realistically you should not let this happen. Yeah, show up, take care of business. That's what you're supposed to do today. You don't have to go hang 60 on anybody. Just show up, take care of business, stay healthy, get this win, and move on to the rest of your conference schedule. 
Tim, let's go to uh, Arkansas Baptist. What do they have to do today to walk away? With you them? know, as Taylor Swift once said, you just got to shake it off. <laughs> I did that to hurt you. I did that it to hurt did. your soul. It did hurt me a little bit. <laughs> you just got to shake it off. I'm going to talk about their last game. This is an audition year for you. And what the Sooner wants to see is how you handle yourself the week after a brutal loss. Come out here, just chins held high, play some football, and see what you can pull off today. Second, yeah. Yeah, I'd put Aitman in the box. Yeah, I would stack the box today against Keaton Dudek. Do not let Dudek beat you. It sounds crazy to say dare Jordan Barlow to beat you because he absolutely can. Yeah. But focus on beating Dudek, especially because that's how Sagu can control this game. Just keep him in check and then maybe go to the third point here. Just go nuts. Dive for interceptions, strip balls, ev make every play a game-changing play. Just go out there and, you know, sometimes you say, you know, just hit your man. Yeah. Just get there. This is not the kind of game for no, that. No. Just do everything you can. If you're giving up a 70-yard touchdown pass because you're a dime for interception, I'm honestly fine with that. Go make some plays today. We had Jazz catch up, our sideline reporter Jazz William catch up with Coach Ryan Smith. We're going to go down there real quick. Jazz, down to you and Coach Smith. Thanks, Adam. Coach, big fourth quarter comeback last week, but feel, fell just a few short. What are we using from that game to utilize today? You know, you're trying to learn from the negatives and, uh, you know, promote the positives and really push through that. So for us, it was, you know, it was really bittersweet. That game always comes down to that, and we know we're in that game, but you try to identify the two to three plays that cause you to lose that game, and you just try to grow from that. And, you know, for us, all the adversity aspects of it, we're trying to build a cohesiveness that we grow from those experiences and we learn from those. How do you plan to capitalize on the fact that the Buffaloes have a young team and what will you do to come away with a win in front of this big homecoming crowd? Our goal is just to do what we do. You know, offense is, from an identification standpoint, we're going to do what we do. And, uh, you know, we're going to execute at a high efficient level. Uh, it all relies on Jordan and those guys up front, you know, doing what they do. And then defensively, we're just going to try to be schematically sound. Pre-snap alignment shoes for us. And then, you know, for us, we've been able to do this so far this season. We want to continue to create breaks to special teams. Thanks, Coach, and good luck today. Back to you, Adam. Thank you, Jazz. Thank you, Coach Smith. Don't go anywhere. Arkansas Baptist, Sagu Lions, homecoming coming your way. We're going to go down to the prayer and the national anthem and the coin toss live right here on the Sagu Sports Network. Oh, say can you see by the God's early light What so proudly we held At the twilight's last gleaming Whose bright stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight or the rampart we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets wreck the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled gold banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the
there you see the captains uh, for SAGU today wearing number three. That is Mike Mouton, number 99, big Keandre Belcher. We know him very well. And number 66, Evan Greathouse and Jordan Barlow, the captains for SAGU. As we get ready to see who will start with possession and who will defend. SAGU's won both tosses at home this year, deferred one game and took the ball the next. So uh, definitely not a clear. Some coaches have a set in stone strategy. We're always going to do this. We're always going to do that. Uh, Coach Smith takes it game by game, what he's going to approach. I imagine this is a game that if you get the ball, for, if you win, you're going to take the ball first. Try to set the tone on offense. I agree. With, with the coin toss is official. Here we go. Arkansas Baptist won the toss. They will elect to receive. And Sagu will start this game on defense and uh, no handshake there to start the game, Tim. A little, maybe a little bit of an intimidation factor from the Buffaloes looking for a big win today. Yeah, I mean, you got to have a little bit of sway. You got to have something uh, to fire yourself up in a game like this. And, you know, looking for any, any extra motivation you can find to, to slug it out today. So Sagu's defense has been a strong a strong point so far this season uh, for the Lions. They have played well. They have forced turnovers. They really have kept them in the games that they've they've ended up losing. Um, really gave them a shot to come back and and uh, get, make it close, especially this last week against Arizona Christian. They fell behind huge at yeah. halftime. Another game they lost, they, against Ottawa, Arizona. They went down by 21 and cut it back to 7 uh, in the second half. Last week, they fell down by 21 points and we're down to seven at the seven yard line with four seconds left, trying to tie the game up before the game ending sack. Kieran Woodley will do the kicking duties. Woodley, the recipient of the Sooner Athletic Conference Special Teams Player of the Week two weeks ago. And last week as well, I believe. Oh, back to back, back weeks. Back to back weeks. I missed that. But here's Woodley, the two time 2021 Sooner Athletic Conference Special Teams Player of the Week. The kickoff will be a short one, fair catch called for and brought in. It will go to the 25 yard line, as that is where the Buffaloes, the Arkansas Baptist Buffaloes, will take over on offense. And we will see if Sagu's defense is up to the task here on this first drive. You got to think, Tim, there's a bigger crowd today than we normally see with it being homecoming at all. You got to look for the, the defense to feed off the energy of the bigger crowd here this week. Yeah, you, you want to get those cheers going early. You, you can hear the crowd. They've, they've got the old old school thunder sticks in the stands. <laughs> uh, you know, plus there was free Chick-fil-A in the parking lot. So you want college students to show up to a football game. You, you, you offer free Chick-fil-A. Free food in general is going to get them here. <laughs> So as we start here, they will start with a run to the left side, and that is going nowhere. That was running back Russell Nance taking the handoff from quarterback Christian Gamage. That's going to be a loss of one. Keandre Belcher in on that tackle. There's two guys to look for when you're on defense, and it's, it's the hair and 99. <laughs> you can't miss them. Keandre Belcher. And we're going to call his name a lot today. We've called his name a lot throughout the course of his career. Yeah. Has been one of the all-time greats on the defensive line here for the Lions. Second and 11 now. Back to pass is Gamage. He's going to take a shot deep and heaves it. Has a man. He almost brings it in. It is dropped, but a flag comes in late. This may be a pass interference against the Lions. It looked like it was pretty good coverage down the sideline by Lontarius McLean. Yeah, a lot of hand fighting, and the refs might have said that McLean did just a little bit too much, and that was nearly brought in for a catch by Justin Hughes. Wait to see what the call is. Nobody's really moving yet. Will we pass interference? Somebody. Pass interference. Two flags on the field. Defense, number five. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, there you have it. Lontarius McLean gets nabbed for the pass interference. And, Tim, you talked about some of the things that the Buffaloes would have to do uh, to try to win this game. Taking shots downfield has to be on that list. Yeah, go downfield, nearly made the catch, and you pick up 15 free yards. McLean uh, just did a little bit too much holding on to the arm there. And so a quick start to this game, get approaching midfield for the Buffaloes. Gamage keeps it himself, tries to get it to the outside. He's got wheels. He's going to duck out of bounds after about a four-yard carry. We'll call it three yards. That's going to make it second and seven. And there you see the wheels, the speed of Christian Gamage. Yeah, he's, he's small out there, five foot nine, but quick on that read option. Getting pursued to the sideline. Not, not, a, not a bad first down run. A little bit of positivity. To, you know, he said, just keep moving those chains. If you can start this game off with a touchdown drive, that, that would change Sagu's mentality in a hurry. 
And he will hand it off again. And this one again wrapped up for a loss. That time the initial contact made by Joseph Chavez. And they're going to bring him down for a loss of four. And Chavez just straight in the backfield, shooting that A gap. Didn't stand a chance, Russell Nance. I mean, it was, it was over as soon as the play began. And this is a situation that if you are a Buffaloes fan, you do not want to see your team get in. It is third and 11. And for a team that when they can move the ball on offense is very run heavy, you don't want to see these third and longs. Christian that, Gamage will, will line up and check. Zagas defense has struggled on some of these third and longs, but that's taking into account that they're playing Arizona Christian Ottawa, Arizona, two <laughs> big offenses. Here is Gamage back to pass. Steps up, lets it go towards the sideline. It's brought in right at the first down marker. We'll see where they mark him down. It is right at the sticks, and they will give it to him. Pass completed that time to Jamar Guy. So two of your key players to watch there hooking up there on third down. Yeah, and Guy does a great job of cutting back to this ball and establishing possession right at the marker. He was carried away from it, but his forward progress got on the marker. Great pitch and catch from Gamish to Guy. First and 10, new set of downs. First completed pass on the day for Gamage. He will hand it off to Nance. Nance again had, finds no room, but there is a flag that comes in right at the point of attack. This could be one of two things. This could be a hold or could be a face mask. Holding. Offense, number 78, 10 yards from the previous spot, replay, first down. So there it is. It is in the area of holding, and it is indeed holding. That will move him back 10 yards. But Sagu's defense, I mean, they are not allowing uh, Russell Nance to have any rushing room. Yeah, every handoff to Nance so far has gone for negative yards, and that play will, won't go in the uh, stat sheet since they accepted the penalty. But, yeah, they have caught him behind the line of scrimmage. Meanwhile, the throws have been gaining yards, so I'll be interested to see if uh, the Buffaloes mix this up pretty quick and just start airing it out. It'll be first and 20. Here is Gamage back to pass. Lobs it up deep down the sideline. Another flag comes in and in coverage, Lontarius McLean again looking for Justin Hughes. And he's going to pick up his second pass interference penalty. He got burned on this play and has pulled yes, the did. jersey and brings the guy down. Looks like a double move. So this should result in an automatic first down here for the Buffaloes. They've had, oh, here we go. Here's the Pass interference, push. defense, number five. Spot foul, automatic, first down. So it won't be the full 15 yards since the play didn't 15, 15 yards, yards, automatic, first down. Thought it was Sundays. We're in Saturdays here, so it's a 15 yard, not a spot foul. So three first downs so far here for the Buffaloes, two coming by way of pass interference penalties. Yeah, not what you want to see twice now, McLean getting a little bit burned and being forced to, you know, try to make a play on it. And that time trips the receiver up entirely and the Buffaloes have crossed midfield with a fresh, fresh set of downs. First and 10, a flag comes in before the snap. It'll be a, a dead ball. ball. Start. Yep. Offense, number 71, five-yard penalty, remain first down. So Sagu gets advantage there, the false start that'll move him back five. It's be first and 15. And the Buffalo so far have really responded well. They had the 10-yard penalty to start the last drive, the, the last set of downs. They had a loss of yardage before that. They picked up both first downs. They've responded really well on this first drive. So we'll see how they handle this five-yard penalty. And we'll hand it off to Nance. Nance is nowhere to run there for Nance. He's going to pick up actually a gain of one. Actually, crushing new running back into the game. That's going to be receiver Desmond Newton getting a carry out of the backfield. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll call that a, a gain of half a yard maybe. Still no room at all for these Buffaloes running backs to run. They'll call it second and 15. It's a short 15. And as you said, maybe a half a yard there for Newton. Back to pass is Gamage. He's going to heave it down the middle of the field. Has a man wide open, broken up. What an incredible play. Kevion Davis coming out of nowhere to knock that ball away. He had a receiver wide open in Hughes. You won't see it right here, but Davis, that's not his man. 
You see him breaking off right there, coming across the field and just patting that down. That is a pass defended. You see that in the stat sheet sometimes, pass defended. Sometimes that can just be a little bit breaking up, a, a, a guy kind of dropping the ball. That is a true pass defended. Hustling down the field. You'll see it a little bit better on this replay right here. Just having to break off his man and come running down to swat that ball away and bring up a third and 14. Melakai Garza, the intended receiver. So now third and 15, back to pass is Gamage. He steps up, let's go across the middle of the field. No one's there, incomplete pass. That brings up fourth down. And it looks like no and movement on the Buffalo sideline quite yet. It's a, it's a little odd there. Gamage the the just misses yep. Melakai Garza here. Garza is wide open at the 35-yard line. If that pass is on target, they pick up the first down. As it is, they are going to punt. Some Ready? late movement. Here comes the punting unit. A first drive, though, that crossed midfield and took four minutes off the clock. Sagu's defense finally is going to get him off the field, but not before the Buffaloes are able to show some life on offense. Uh, exactly what you want to see from the Buffaloes. A little bit of fight in them coming out. The play is blown dead. Adrian Rowell is back to return the punt for the Lions. Doing the punting duties for the Buffaloes is Eric Alford, the receiver. Ball start. Offense number 32. That's a five-yard penalty. Fourth down. False start. We're moving back five, so it'll be fourth and about 20. Makes that decision to punt even more easy. I'm not sure what you're going to do in midfield on fourth and 15. But here is Alford to punt. Five combined penalties on this first drive. Two by the Lions and three oh, by the Oh, it's almost blocked, but it is going to be down at the just shy of the 30. Take a Sagu bounce and is finally stopped just shy of the 35-yard line. Sagu will take over on offense at the 32. And we will see Jordan Barlow and Keaton Dudek come out here on offense and see what they can do. And that was narrow. Sagu on their last home game against the Millsaps Majors had two blocked punts. Now both of them were still able to travel forward and pick up 10, 15 yards. Uh, but they have been able to bring the pressure on special teams and they nearly got to the punter that time as well. So Sagu comes out in a heavy formation. Dudek is actually going to take the direct snap. Or no, correction, actually. It was the his man to his right taking the snap. That was Javante Harper taking the direct snap out of the backfield. Not a name we've called so much this season. But they're going to try to get maybe a, a little bit of a weapon here on offense. Jordan Barlow still split out at receiver. And Dudek lining up at the, the faux quarterback position. Dudek takes it. Little wildcat action. And he's going to gain about three yards there on second down make it third and one this is not a look we've seen so far this season they go no huddle and wildcat to start this drive yeah totally different than we've seen but just obviously this, this is the kind of week you want to try different looks potentially see if they work see Injury. if you can execute them time out a buffalo's player is down so sagu facing a third and one just shy of the 45 yard line So Sagu coming out in a new look offense. Again, one we have not seen yet this season. Keaton Dudek taking the direct snaps with Barlow split out receiver. So it is a wildcat look. Yeah. Interesting. I want I, I want to see Dudek throw the ball. Let's see what he <laughs> we know he can run. We know he can catch. Let's see if he can pass a little bit. Probably not going to see that on third and one, but you know, a, a guy can dream. A guy can dream. You're probably also not going to see throwing the ball to Barlow on a game like this. Uh, not not a necessarily a play you want to risk no. mm -mm. in this game. Not so. at all. Not at all. Getting off the field on his own power is Jalen Sanders. Good to see. Sagu will face a third and one. Those first two runs were, were decent, but brings up a third down situation. Sagu has been consistently good at these all year, though, converting these short yardage situations. They will line up in a traditional shotgun that we are used to seeing the Lions come out in. Dudek to the right of Barlow. Barlow will hand it off to Dudek. Dudek cuts back. He gets the first down and then some moving the chains for the Lions. And that will be their first first down of the afternoon. No secret to the game plan thus far. Obviously two, oh, two runs we haven't seen before coming out of the Wildcat. But right there, just hand it off to Dudek. Go straight up the middle. And not a surprise to see Sagu really want to establish this ground game from the very start. First and 10 
Saggy with three out wide to the right. Jamal Long on the bottom of your screen. Sends a man in motion. Will hand it to Dudek. Dudek around the edge. Cuts it back up inside. The helmet comes off on the field, but Dudek's got a pretty good run there on first down. It's going to be second and one. A flag is on the field right at midfield. And it's right in the area of that helmet coming off, so we'll see what the call is. Dudek here does a good job of finding the hole, and yeah, there comes the helmet. Kind of a legal hands to the face situation before Dudek comes down just a yard short, but the Saggy Lions may have the first down on the penalty. Personal foul. Personal foul. Hands to the Hands face. To the defense, defense, defense number three. three. 15 yards added to the end of the run. First down. There it is, 15 yards at the end of the run. And Saggy will have a first down in very good field position. That play all, all started with a nice, kind of a, a fake read option from Jordan Barlow. Seizes up the Buffalo's defense just enough to give Dudek a lane around the corner. Picks up nine. Barlow with a three stack to his right. Gets a man off sides. He's got a free play. Throws it up to Jamal Long. Jamal Long goes up, brings it in. Is he in the end zone? They say it's incomplete. They are fighting for it out of bounds. And the ball ends up being bobbled just enough out of bounds. But that will be a free five yards for and, Sagu. And I think Long Defense. actually catches this. Number 23 in the neutral zone at the snap. Out of bounds. Five yard penalty. Yeah, that's a Remains. catch. First and down. his first foot just lands out of bounds. Tough. A yep. Another great throw and catch from Barlow to Long. Long has been excellent this year at going up and catching those jump balls. He pulls that one down, just unable to complete the process, as they say. Uh, then some scrapping at the end, but it is a free five to start to drive off. I know the, the words complete the process, or they <laughs> sting for you, Tim. Here's a handoff to Dudek up the middle. He's got some room to run down to the five, into the end zone for the touchdown. Keaton Dudek takes it from 24 yards out for the score, and Sagu will go up a touchdown, and depending on the extra point, seven to nothing. The hole is created. Dudek goes through it, and then with that spread out offense, he only has one linebacker to beat. Then it's just a foot race to the end zone. There's no way that those DBs are going to be able to respond in time to catch up with Dudek. He's just too fast. So the Lions go down the field every single yard gained by a penalty or running play in the first drive of the game. The, the extra point is up, and it is good, but a flag comes in. I'm not sure they're going to get a false start. They did blow it dead. I think it's going to be Offside, an encroachment. Offside, yeah, encroachment. Yep. That, will, that, that blows the play dead. Offside. Uh. Defense, number 23, making contact. Half the distance, retry. And you know, oh, for a second there, it looked like uh, Woodley was leaving the field. He got his one yard. He was thinking maybe they're going to go for it. But he goes, no, no, get back out there. Get back out there. I think, I think he thought that because he had made it, it was going to stand. Oh, okay. They blew the play dead. I was on the same page. I'm like, go for it. You're on the one yard line. Go up 8 nothing. So now they're going to take the extra point here. Woodley back out again. You always love a good awkward score in a football <laughs> game. 8 nothing, 7 2, those kind of weird. Oh, and that it's blocked. blocked. It's picked up. They've got room to run down to the 10. Can they push it in, push in the pile, and he's going to be short of the end zone? So after the, the, it actually works out in yeah. favor of the Buffaloes, the offsides allows them to, to block the second extra point attempt. And Tim, this is something that we talked, you talked about in, in, in pregame. Be aggressive. Yeah. And the Buffaloes have shown very heavy blitz and rush packages. There we see another one trying to time the snap. Yeah. Get and into the backfield and cause chaos. And that's what caused the initial penalty. And that's one of the situations where why not jump off sides every single time, especially if they're going to blow it dead. Right. That's a rule I actually have it, uh, issues with in all of football. Unless it's unabated to the quarterback on an offside situation, don't blow the play dead. Give the offense the free play. This should be a 7 nothing ball game, but a penalty by the Buffaloes ends up bailing them out and making the 6-0 game. I actually, I side with you heavily on that one, Tim, especially because on an extra point, why not just add it to the kickoff right. afterwards? But I, I'm with you there. Let the play run. There was a, no danger of anyone being hit. The right. kick was good. The only time you really worry about it, guy coming across the corner, rushing at the quarterback, blow that play dead before somebody right. gets hurt. 
Got our live chat up and running there. Be sure and comment on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and you might see your comment featured here today on Homecoming Saturday. Fair catch called for and brought in, so the Buffaloes will take over again at the 25-yard line. Yes, as Tim just said, comment on the Facebook or the, the YouTube live feed, and your, your uh, comment may be featured on air. I do see one from our friend Corey Thorpe over at NAIA F-Ball. Said, thank you for having him on the show. Corey, trust me, the pleasure was all ours, Absolutely. my friend. You make us look smarter. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I'm not watching uh, 40 football games a week, and that, that's where I've got to go to, to learn anything about the NAI. Be sure and tune into those guys. Really doing a great job of boosting the entire uh, league, NAI, whatever you want to call the NAI, just boosting the entire level of this sport. So be sure and tune into them. First and 10 here for Arkansas Baptist. Rolling out to his right is Gamage. Tries to clean across the middle of the field, and it falls incomplete. That was dangerous. There was a bunch of hands, a bunch of bodies in that in that vicinity. Could have been easily intercepted, but fortunately for the Buffaloes, it falls incomplete. Gamage has been in motion on just about every single snap he's taken. Rolling out, trying to get away from that saggy blitz, and he's been okay at throwing on the run. That one just a little bit too much defense. Second and 10. That's the first time I've seen them throw the ball on first down. They've been aggressively running the ball on offense so far in this one. It's still early, but down 6 nothing on the Buffaloes. They will a, a late handoff there, and it's going to work for them. Running down, the, uh, running down the middle of the field is Nance. Nance has a huge gain. His first real good rush of the afternoon results in a first down and then some. And a bit of a read option there yeah. with Gamage hanging on for a long time. And then getting down the field and laying a bit of a block. Great play by Gamage there. It was a late handoff. He really waited to the last second to let that one go into the gut of his running back, Russell Nance. And it's a big gain up to the 44-yard line. So, again, the Buffaloes moving on offense. Back to pass is Gamage. Rodriguez with a heavy rush, throwing it deep down the sidelines. Some hand, some fighting again. That's got it. Another flag comes out. I think, Tim, I think this one's going to go against the offense because it looked like uh, Justin Hughes threw the defensive back, Lontarius McLean, to the ground. We'll see what the call is here. It's going to be tight. I don't know it's how you could whistle McLean <laughs> since, unless they're saying he tripped him up, but he tripped him up because he got thrown to the ground. We'll wait on the call. Pass interference. Offense, number 81. 15 yards from the previous spot. Remain first down. That's the right call there. You ever have a feeling where you think a call is going to go one way? And yeah. It clearly should not, but that one called correctly. Offensive pass interference. And you know McLean's going, please don't give him my third pass interference. I'm going to have to run so many laps on Monday if I have three <laughs> pass interference penalties in the first seven minutes. Just, just don't give it to me. So another uh, first down penalty. The Buffaloes had a couple of those on the last drive. This one will make it a first and 20. 15-yard penalty goes against the Buffaloes. And another pre-snap flag here. A lot of penalties. One of the things that we talked about was trying to keep the laundry off the field, but both teams so far today very penalized. Uh, we might be going for a record in penalty yards here. Ball start. Ball start. Offense, number 71, five-yard penalty, remain first down. Yeah, by my quick head count, that's at least the sixth penalty on the Buffaloes. Now, one randomly enough took a point off the board for the Lions, but six <laughs> penalties in just under seven minutes. The Lions have two or three themselves. So, yeah, obviously, going to, both sides want to clean the game up a little bit. Buffaloes, you can't afford first and 30, obviously. Back to pass is Gamage. He's rolling out. He's going to go back across the field. Has a man wide open. Has him out of the flat, and he just kind of falls down. I like that play call. I really like good it. play call. Yep. Pushing the entire field to the right. It's designed the entire time to get out to Newton. Throws it across the field to Newton. That can be a little bit dangerous, but he diverted the field enough. Honestly, a great response there by uh, Damaris Heron to not bite, to not overbite at least on the play. Get back across the field to limit it to just a gain of eight. Uh, you know, but it's what you wanted if you're the Buffaloes. You want to get this back to a third manager, we'll pick up seven or eight here and at least have a shot at it. Second and 22. You're going to want to pick up some, some chunks of yardage here. Back to pass is Gamage. He's rolling out. He's going to take off and run. Tries to make a man miss, but he's going to pick up. It's not a bad gain there on second down. It's going to make it third and probably about 16. Again, I call these third and theoretical. And again, it's hair in there breaking off the right side and Gamish says do everything he can to escape that and get up the field so yeah I, I don't call these third and manageable but I call them third and theoretical 
Third and 30 ain't happening. Uh, third, you see third and 17s happen on occasion. Well, the Buffaloes have com uh, converted a third and long today by way of a, uh, a long pass down the sideline, but you got to keep in mind here, Sagu's already had two pass interference penalties go against them. Back to pass is Gamage. He's going to take a shot deep down the middle of the field. There's a bunch of Lions there, and it is... Is it, intercept, it is intercepted, got underneath it just enough. That is Isaac Gowdy playing center field, forcing the turnover, and Sagu will take over. Tim, you kind of look at that maybe as an arm punt. That's an arm punt. I was about to say that. that that's an old-school arm punt. Gamage just heaves it deep. Honestly, I doubt Sagu would have had uh, any worse field position than that on a punt. Yep. But the defense does get off the field. Gowdy with the interception. Take a quick look at the conference standing there. You see Sagu right there in the middle of the pack. They're one and two in conference, but that's with the two toughest teams having been played already. There will be some wins to pick up. We talked about the year. We talked about Langston playing the bottom of the conference to start the season. Sagu's played the top of the conference to start the season. And valiantly, yeah. uh, might I say. Uh, they were in very much in both those games. A pitch. Quick out to his man on the outside, running. East-West is not what you want to do. Does he get back to the line of scrimmage? I think he just barely does. That is Zachary Johnson taking the pitch from Barlow. Yeah, he had to fight a lot to get back to the line of scrimmage, lay down the shoulder, but great response by this Buffalo's defense. Didn't didn't bite on the play action. We saw that a couple weeks ago. That they run some little some uh, triple option offense with with Dudick to Zachary Johnson, and it worked with Barlow with some of the fake pitches. But that time, well scouted by the Buffalo's defense. So now Sagu faces a second and ten. Two stacked out wide to the right for Barlow. Sends a man in motion. That is Johnson. He's going to swing it out to Zachary Johnson. Johnson looking to make a man miss. Turns up field, falls backwards. Does he have enough for the first down? I think he does. Indeed, it will move the chains. First down for the Lions. And I love these hesitation moves from Johnson when he's out here on the flat. He's locking eyes with the defender, just saying, you don't know where I'm going to go. He fakes him to the sideline twice. Just freezes up. DeBoer Washington mentioned him in pregame and creates enough of a lane to get through for the first down. Sagu with a new set of downs. We've not seen them take really any shots deep downfield except for that free play shot to Jamal Long. They've kept it close. They've kept it on the ground. Sends Dudek in motion. So now Barlow, empty backfield. Back to pass. Quick hitter across the middle. Has his man. It looks like it is Mike Mouton. Picks up a decent gain there on first down. Makes it second and three. Reception of seven yards. Nothing like an old school hitch route. Run down the field, turn around, catch the ball. If it had been thrown a little bit higher, he might have been able to turn around and keep going. As it is, he just collects it, goes to the ground. Gain a seven on first down. Nobody's going to complain about that too much. Especially the way you've been running so far. Oh, absolutely. Second and three is, is where you want to be. They go with a pistol eye formation in the backfield. Dudek and Zachary Johnson. Says Johnson in motion. Barlow hands it off to Dudek. Dudek looking for some room on the outside. He does cut it to the outside, and he's met quickly. That's a good job of gang tackling there by the Buffaloes. Picks up only one. Just a gain of one there, and I, I want to point out here, I, I love Jordan Barlow just trying to sell this uh, this fake throw here without the ball. Uh, he, he hands it off to Dudek, and... Everybody knows he has it, but eh, just in case, there it is. <laughs> in case any of you really think I don't have the ball anymore, I'm just going to keep on doing it. So, hey, he's, he always wants to be involved in the play. But just to gain a one or bring up another third down for the Lions, they were able to convert them all on the last drive. Third and two here for the Lions offense. We saw them one for one on the day so far on third down conversions. Three out wide to the right for Barlow. Sends a man in motion at Zachary Johnson. He's going to hand it off to Dudek. Dudek up the field. He's got it up for the first down. Looking for some more. He gets it past midfield into Buffalo territory. And that will move the chains once again for Sagu. Pre-snap motion. It's a beautiful thing. Johnson goes there. Dudek sells a little bit better that time. And just a brutal blocking up front by the Sagu O-line. Dudek had that first down from the moment the snap happened. It was just a question of how many yards he was going to pick up. Barlow comes out with an empty backfield. Two, three stacked to his right, two stacked to his left. And we get a timeout from Arkansas Baptist. They did not like what they were seeing on the defensive side of the ball. Timeout. Timeout. Defense. That's the first timeout of the half. So the Buffaloes will use their first timeout as we get a live look in at Texas Wesleyan and Wayland Baptist. One of the games we talked about pregame, Texas Wesleyan 
they just breed good football or good sports programs from football, basketball, all the way down to ping pong. They are very competitive. So we'll have live look in at other student athletic conference games throughout the day. Looks like Texas Wesleyan offense looks like they're going to break one long here against Wayland Baptist and then pushed out of bounds. So Texas Wesleyan putting it on Wayland Baptist right now. Out there in Fort Worth. Just down the road. Yeah. Well, they'll, they'll, they'll be taking the trip down here here, here pretty soon. That's always going to be a fun game. Always fun. Uh, the the Sagu Texas Wesleyan battle of the, the collegiate battle of 287 <laughs> rather than the local Waxahachie Ennis rivalry. But it's <laughs> all the way up to Fort Worth. As we come out here to, to first and 10, Sagu empty backfield, five wide here for Barlow. Hard count. Gets moving up front, but not across the line of scrimmage. He's going to take a shot deep to Jamal Long. Ma Long going for it just out of his reach. Incomplete. Double covered there that time was Jamal Long. That's making second and ten. Yeah, I think the Buffaloes are well aware of who Jamal Long is. They've been throwing double coverage on him so far this game. Have a man down low, a man up top. Even if this ball is on the money, I don't know if Long's going to be able to pull it in because he was blanketed underneath and above. We we'll bring up, up second down and ten. Three to the right, one to the bottom of your screen for Barlow. Looks like he's going to take the handoff quick hitter across the middle. Zachary Johnson has the first down and then some. He's going to make a man miss. Brought down from behind right at the 30-yard line, just shy of the 30, at the 31. Move the chains again for Saku. Zachary Johnson getting involved early here uh, for this offense. A well-executed quick slant, especially when you mix it with the play action, is borderline undefensible, it feels like, especially when you've got an athlete like Johnson out there who could so quickly get to where he needs to be. And then it's all, all him on the yards after the catch, fighting, spinning, making men miss down to the 31-yard line. Sends Dudek in motion. Here's Barlow, back to pass. Clean pocket, deep down across the middle of the field, off the hands of his man, and it's almost oh. intercepted. Hits the ground. Lederick Holmes. Lekedrick is, Holmes, yep, he's sick. He, <laughs> he is going to remember that one on the bus ride home because he has it twice here. It's going to bounce up once. He has it there. He bats it. He goes, okay, now it's going to be easy. And just off his finger, tips him down. Makes, sick, makes it second and ten here for Sagu. Tough break for the Buffaloes. They had an easy interception just slipped through their fingers. The Buffaloes, they're bringing four. They drop back. Barlow across the oh, intercepted. This time it's picked off. And he, he got gets it. a chance at redemption and he takes advantage. Lakeetrick Holmes can rest easy. He got the pick the very <laughs> next play and, and the Buffaloes will take over. It looked like Barlow's man was just never turned around and ready for that pass. Yeah, Barlow sees something here. He almost runs with it and throws it again. There was some miscommunication there. But yeah, you don't usually see an instant chance at redemption as the intended receiver looked like it was Blaine Rowe. Lakedrick Holmes with the pick right after he dropped it totally redeems himself. There was zero chance he was going to drop that ball. No. As soon as it was, it was coming his way. And we'll try to see what happens here. Here's the play action. Barlow was looking at Blaine Rowe. And he broke to the outside. Yep. Yeah, he had Blaine Rowe initially, but didn't like the look he was seeing. So he waited for a second, and then he thought Rowe was going to cut in. Instead, Rowe cut out. Ball gets thrown straight into Holmes' hand. Big turnover from Arkansas Baptist, who... Coming into this game as a heavy underdog is putting up a fight so far here in the first quarter. First down, Carey went for one yard, so it'll be second and nine uh, here for the Buffaloes. That carry went to Desmond Newton. Here's Gamage, hands it off to Newton again. Newton cuts it upfield. Keandre Belcher there for the tackle. He's going to fall forward for another three yards. That'll make it third and six here for the Buffaloes. Really trying to get something going on the ground game here. They've had some success through the air, but that's mostly been thanks to penalties. If they can establish any sort of double threat offense, that could really help them get on the board. They got to get on the board eventually if they want to be in this game. But so far, they've, they've, they've looked a lot better than what we were thinking. We'll just say it. Yeah, absolutely. Damage back to pass. He's got his man on the towards the sideline that was brought in by Justin Hughes for the first down. He's been looking Hughes' way a bunch so far today. He has been. He's been going down the field. This time he gets the double back route. A little bit of a wobbler, but Hughes does a great job again of cutting back to that ball. These, these uh, receivers have been doing a really good job of, again, coming back towards where the quarterback throws it. 
a big third down conversion. No three and outs today for no, uh, not at all. Yep. Ar 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 Arkansas Baptist. Almost at Arizona. We got too many ARs around here. <laughs> Gamage will keep this up. Makes a man miss. He's going to be up the sidelines. Makes another man miss. Ah. Cuts it back inside. Ducks out of bounds. I think he's got enough for the first. Oh, they're going to mark him just shy of the first down. Make it second and one. Yeah. Both Spencer and Heron are going to get completely juked here. There's Spencer getting beat. And then Heron, take him to the sideline. Gets cut inside to pick up an extra three yards and look like he got the first down to me they're gonna mark him short but i thought the ball got across the line bring up a second and one just shy of midfield they have gotten two midfield nearly on every single drive it's just a matter of finishing a drive off at this point second and one back to pass is gamage takes a shot deep down the sideline again it's under thrown brought in and caught there was some hand fighting and the sagu bench and coaches are praying for pass interference but it is not called, and that will be complete for the first down, down the sideline to his man, Kenny McDaniel. Actually, I actually think it's going to be Jamar Guy. We mentioned pregame, number 89. And there is going to be a little bit of hand fighting here. You won't see it there. Maybe a little bit of a push off, but they're, they're going to let the guys play on those corners a lot. And so he gets open and makes a big catch down to the 21-yard line. The Buffaloes are moving here in the waning moments of the first quarter. They will hand it off. Newton looking for some running room. He's got some around the outside. Brought down after a good gain there on first down. A gain of about That's four. That's the end of the first quarter. Called a gain of five on first down as the teams will swap sides. Flip field position. Be second and five as we come back into the second quarter with the Buffaloes moving on offense. Showing a little bit of uh, versatility here through the air on the ground. They're finally getting some momentum. We're only one quarter in, but they only play four of them. Are there mouse traps on the Sagu sideline right now? You mentioned it pregame. You mentioned trap game. We didn't say the score of last week's game. I'll say it. Langston beat this team 85 to 6. It's 6 0 right now, and, and the Buffaloes are driving. And I will say, you, you mentioned, you said bounce back after last week's game. You, you said we're not even going to talk about it. And for that reason, Thanks, Adam. Dean Clarensaw, you're known to be a football guru here at SAGU. How do you feel that your SAGU football team has a better record than the Kansas City Chiefs? You know, it's, it's painful right now, but I, you know, I'm happy, obviously, for SAGU, but the Chiefs are going to turn it around as well. So my suggestion is SAGU needs to keep on winning because the Chiefs are coming. And we're we're going to do it as well. Also, how would you evaluate the SAGU Lions' first quarter so far? Well, you know, I think we, we've moved the ball well. Defense played good. couple plays we got to tighten up, but uh, I think we got this one. I think we're going to take this team. Thank you so much, Dean Clarenceau. Back to you, Adam. Dr. Dean Clarenceau. Dr. Clarenceau. Dr. He just wants to show up and watch a football game, <laughs> and we go down there and roast him and his Chiefs. I, I mean, that, that, that seems uncalled for on our part, but hey, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, I think it's funny. I mean, it no, goes, I, it's, uh, it's hilarious. He, he is well known. I remember uh, hearing that when they played in the Super Bowl two years ago, Dr. Clarenceau had every Chiefs jersey ready in case they started falling behind so he could swap them out. That's my kind of guy. Uh, if you're not that superstitious <laughs> about football, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's exactly what you need to be. Swap those jerseys out if you go. And it worked. They won the Super Bowl. So. Second, second down play, incomplete pass. Third down, they're going to swing it out oh. wide to his receiver. That play was open, and it would have gone for a touchdown that, had the pass been on the money. Nance is walking into the end zone if Gamage put this in his hands, but throws it behind him. Yeah, if he leads him at all, that's a touchdown. Instead, no way Nance can get back to it. And it will be fourth and five, and the Buffaloes are not going to bring on the field goal unit. Based on their stats, a lot of missed extra points this year already, so not a surprise, especially in a game like this. you got to get touchdowns, not field goals. Fourth and five. Can Sagu's defense get off the field after a tough drive so far? And a flag will come out. This may make the decision a little bit more interesting. I'll start. I'll start. Offense, number 81, five-yard penalty, still remains fourth down. So that will make it fourth and ten, and it looks like they'll still keep the offense back out there. Yeah, because at this point, it's 
six one way, half a dozen the other. It makes the fourth down harder, but it also makes the field goal that much tougher as well. So they will keep the offense on the field. They've been picking up these must have downs a yeah, on absolutely. occasion and thus far on this drive they've done it each time here's gamage he's going to take a, a quick throw a fade route looking for his man and it is is that caught it's incomplete off wow. the ground it was underthrown just a bit pretty good coverage there on the outside by kevin on davis so sagu's defense bends but they do not break no points allowed there for the lions and the offense will come back out on the field well, that, that was close yeah we'll catch the replay here hughes again cutting back Gets grabbed a little bit, that, and yeah, that, you see the ball hit the ground there. Yep. That underthrown ball to a receiver is the hardest thing to cover as a defensive yeah. back because you either you either get beat because he just stops on a dime and brings it in, or it's pass interference. That's a good I, job by Dave. I, I, I always kind of, there's one of those calls I dislike when I see it. It's like, wait, I'm getting penalized because he underthrew the ball by five yards, and I bumped into him, but it's tough. Sagu's defense makes the stop after the Buffaloes get inside the red zone. Dudek on first down. Looking for some room to run. There wasn't really anything there. He had an initial gain of about four, but started moving backwards. That's going to actually become a gain of two on first down, make it second and eight. Yeah, it's all about what you establish. Right here, he has a gain of, four, like I said, four or five. But since he gives himself up and runs backwards, it is a negligible gain of two. Zagu's offense after pretty convincingly going down the field the first drive. Some issues on the last drive with the interception and a slow start to this one. Second and eight, Barlow comes out four wide, two stacked to the bottom of your screen. Sends a man in motion, Zachary Johnson. He's gonna hand it off to Dudek, fake, pick, fake the pitch. Dudek up the middle, gets it down just shy of the 40. A huge gain there on fourth, or on second down rather, to move the chains for the Lions. And you just can't give Keaton Dudek a, a gap like that out of the backfield. I mean, he has so much room to run right there. And then it's just a matter of, okay, who's gonna be the one to finally get a hand on him and keep him from breaking it free. Easy for First down for Keaton Dudek, who, as you said, he's, he's chasing an all-time Sagu touchdown record on the ground. Has he's seven, some, yep, so far yep, this season. Added one today, and he's adding some yards as well. Sends another man in motion. They will hand it off to Dudek again. Dudek again looking for some blockers out in front of him. Cuts it outside and ducks out of bounds after a gain of three. That'll make it second and seven. Now, I will say, Lowry did that in a two-back system. He did. Now, now he was the yep. goal line back. Uh, yep. You knew when they got down to the two, three-yard line that uh, J.P. Lowry was going to be the one getting the carries. Uh, so if it was a yardage record, we'd have more debate. But <laughs> Lowry was the guy to feast in goal line situations. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. So out, here comes Barlow. Makes it second and five, rather. Back to pass. Pumps. Hits across the middle. Has a man wide open. Can he, get, can he split the defenders? He cuts back inside, gets brought down. That is Zachariah Johnson, the twin brother of Zachary Johnson. He brings it down to the 20-yard line and moves the chains, and Sagu has entered. Oh, no, they're not quite at the 20-yard line. Gets him down at the 22. They're twin brothers, and they are twin at getting to the middle of that field so quick on those quick slants. And just enough room to run. Johnson keeps going down to the 22-yard line. Just the response you wanted to see from these Lions after the last drive ended poorly. Put some more points up on the board here in the second quarter. First and 10 here for Sagu. Sends Zachary Johnson in motion. Takes a snap, keeps it. There's a flag, he does a pitch out to the outside. Johnson makes a man miss, he's got some room to run here. He's just gonna duck out of bounds at the 20 yard line. The flag is in the area of holding. We'll see what they do end up calling here. Barlow even signaled holding. Now I don't know if he's trying to rat out the Buffaloes, or if he's just saying, no, no, it's on us. Holding. Offense, number 52. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. You will very rarely see that defensive holding call, so maybe Barlow was hoping for that on the line of scrimmage. But yeah, that, that flag's thrown in the backfield. You can almost just start walking backwards. Goes on 52, and yeah, you see a blatant hold there. Yeah. Barlow does a good job of staying up, getting that ball out there to Johnson. All for not as it moves back 10 yards, makes it first and 20. And so here's Barlow, sends Dudek in motion. He's gonna be by himself back there. He's back to pass, steps up in the pocket. Swings it out wide to Dudek. Dudek is wide open to the 10, the five, into the end zone, touchdown. Sagu goes up two scores. Jordan Barlow steps up in the pocket, extends the play, swings it out to his wide open running back in the flat, into the end zone. And right there, look at Barlow looking down the field. He knew that Dudek 
had nothing but green ahead of him. When he stepped up, he, he looked down the field trying to find his second and third man and said, wait a minute, if I just throw this out to Dudek, he's gone. And he does just that. Barlow to Dudek for the 32-yard touchdown pass. Mostly 32-yard pass and run. It won't go on Dudek's rushing stats, though. So it's just a plain old touchdown. But his second touchdown of the day, and another flag here on the extra point attempt, and this has just been a messy game as far as the penalties have been concerned. Offside. Yep. Another offside penalty there on the Buffalo. So they're going to move it to the one-yard line. Tim, short memory, but this happened last time. Yeah. No, they're moving it. Oh, wait. Oh, it's going to be a false start. Oh, they're moving it back. The initial riff ruling was offside. For the snap. False start. There it is. Uh, okay. Offense, number 79. Five-yard penalty. Retry. So it makes it a longer extra point attempt here for, for Kieran Woodley. He makes it 25 yards. Get them off sides again. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and it is good. And Sagu will go up 13-0. This time they let the offsides yeah, no, stand. There was, I, I believe so, at least. There was no contact on the play, so they should have Offside. let. Offside. Defense, Defense, number 23. Number 23. That penalty declined. It's out of the play. Extra point is good. So Sagu will go up 13-0. Yeah, you see the replay there of what Barlow could see. We saw it just a moment ago. And the entire right side of the field was empty. Sagu did such a good job of making all the attention get focused to the left side. And because of that, easy walk in for Keaton Dudick. Sagu up 13 to nothing. Big plays on that drive by Zachariah Johnson. And then, of course, the touchdown reception by Keaton Dudick. Moves Sagu down the field very quickly. 11.46 left to play in the second quarter. And there you see Lyon upset alert up 3-0 on Langston as the current score stands. And Texas Wesleyan up 26-0 on Wayland Baptist. And, of course, Louisiana College and Oklahoma Panhandle State kicking off in here in about less than a minute, 2.45 Central Time. Keep an eye on those games as the afternoon progresses. Interesting, uh, interesting. Yeah. Scoreboard there for Lyon and Langston. Not, Not a lot of people would have uh, accept, or, uh, expected that. The Scots might have heard uh, Corey's uh, comment pregame said, oh, it, Corey's disappointed in us. Let's go out there and stun Langston. <laughs> Kickoff is fair caught, called for, and brought in. So the Buffaloes will take over again at the 25-yard line. Their offense has actually looked solid on all three drives. They've gotten near midfield on all three of them. And obviously the last drive got down into the red zone. Would have had a touchdown if it weren't for an errant pass from Gamage. They have looked really solid. For a team that has put up 12 points in the last three games, they have moved down the field. They, these have not been quick three and outs. They've no. been good. They just haven't been able to get on the board. And maybe that's the story that you're seeing these other games. They've got just enough to get to the 50-40 yard line, but they're just unable to finish. And that can be a byproduct of being such a young team. This team is just loaded with freshmen right now. On first down, the carry goes nowhere. Actually, a loss of one. That'll make it second and 11. And that's Naquan Johnson with the carry. So third guy we've seen take the take a snap in the running back position. Naquan Johnson actually this season has taken snaps at quarterback as well as running back. Started the season as a running back, and then I think they needed an emergency quarterback at some point during the season. It's been a long season to start here for the Buffaloes, so they're trying really anything that works. But just keep an eye out. He can throw the ball. They may try something tricky. Damage. Looking for some running room. He's got some. He's got some blockers out in front of him. He's going to get brought down and goes out of bounds after a gain of six there on second down. And that's a scary sight for a quarterback with Rodriguez and Gibson. Oh, yeah. The cornering you right here. Really impressive for him to just duck out of that and make anything positive happen on that play. As you see, Drake Rodriguez bullying the offensive line on two ends, but unable to ever lay a paw on Gamage. And to bring up a third and six for Arkansas Baptist. Sagu having a hard time of playing contain on Gamage. We know he's quick. He's definitely got the tools to break the pocket and get around the edge. Sagu maybe has to do a little bit better of a job containing the wheels of Christian Gamage. He's got a quick hitter to the outside. It's brought in and 
first down yardage gained that time for the Buffaloes. Again, Justin Hughes runs a good route, wide open, and Gamage just puts the ball on him and he moves the chains. Yeah, they've done a really good job of peeling off these DBs, running straight at them, turning around, getting back, really good cut. It's all, it's all about that cut when you're eye to eye with the DB. Cut right back to the ball. Does a good job of getting it right where he needs to for the to move the chains. Another third down conversion for the Buffaloes. First and 10 here for Arkansas Baptist. They will hand it off again up the middle. Drake Rodriguez swallows that one up quickly. Allowed nothing going on there. That's going to be a loss of two or maybe a yard and a half there on first down. And look at how violent that hit is from half a yard away. He has such a burst to him. Usually when you see that kind of a jolt against the running back, it's a guy who's coming in with a head of steam. Frank Rodriguez has almost stood up and he just leans into you and hammers you. That is how strong this guy he is. He plays so violent on the field and, and everything we're told about him is that he is just one of the nicest individuals <laughs> off the field. But if you line me up against him, I'm, I'm a little scared. <laughs> Here's Gamage back he to pass. It all up all Noah week. Gibson gets there and brings him down for the sack. Coming off the edge was Noah Gibson, big number 55. And that is Sagu's first sack of the afternoon. And that was the first true breakdown of the Buffalo's offensive line. They were caving in on the left side and Gibson comes in almost untouched on the right. The only guy who had a shot at him was Desmond Newton, and that's not a battle Newton's going to win against Gibson. So that'll make it third and 19 here for the Buffaloes. Uh, third and very long. They have converted a couple of these today. They've taken shots downfield. Let's we'll see if they try to do it here again. They come out just two out wide for Arkansas Baptist. Back to pass is Gamage to screen off the hands of his receiver and incomplete in the area for the potential interception was Lontarius McLean, but it falls harmlessly to the turf and that'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, one of those plays where you, you shift the entire offensive line up the field to try to block, but because Sagu was so quick, Gamage had to settle for the essentially the screen pattern out there. That wasn't going to go anywhere if it had been caught. Buffalo's kind of Lucky to not have that one tip a little bit higher and an easy pick six for McLean, and they will take the field to punt. Quick punt gets off. They almost got there again. It's going to take a Buffalo bounce. Down to just shy, just past the 30-yard line at the 29. So that's where Sagu will take over on offense. Already up 13-0 in this game, two-score game. And Sagu's offense, with the exception of that interception by Barlow, has looked nearly unstoppable so yeah. far today. And even on that drive, Sagu had gotten down the field. They were nearing the red zone when that interception was thrown. And that was surely just a complete miscommunication between him and uh, Blaine Rowe. If Barlow guess is right that obviously you're never going to blame the quarterback uh it's obviously always on the receiver we got to got to make that clear uh you, you know who you're talking to <laughs> here's but barlow in the empty if he backfield. Had that outside to blame row that's probably a touchdown a little touch pass to dudic dudic cuts it upfield he's got a lot of room to work with tries to bounce outside cuts it back up inside down past the 45 just shy of the 50 yard line and will go down as a completed pass from barlow to dudic on the little jet touch pass yeah and this is what you wanted the offense to look like today just bullying up front, receivers blocking downfield. Dudek just getting to pick his choice. It's not just this one lane there. It's a choose-your-own-adventure for Keaton Dudek out Absolutely. there. Left, right, center. There's somewhere for him to go. First and 10, Sagu just shy of midfield. Barlow takes a snap. Takes a handoff. He's back to pass across the middle. Brought in Zachariah Johnson into the open field. One-handed catch, and he's down inside the red zone. What? What a grab by Zachariah Johnson. Reaches the left hand out there and brings it in for the first down. I mean, I don't know how this stays on his fingers oh here for that long. Oh, my goodness. Eligible receiver. Oh, Eligible and man it's... downfield. Oh. Offense, number 63. Five-yard penalty. Replay. First down. I didn't even see the flag come out and that erases what was an incredible grab by Zachariah Johnson always wow. you always hate seeing highlight real catches get taken get a look here that sheet and it's, it's his hesitation and yet you'll see the Sagu offensive line move just about to that five yard barrier they're not allowed to go to because of the, the quick little pump fake from Barlow uh, 
It, it always just hurts so much to see those those beautiful catches. I, I actually get I get sad. <laughs> I get taken off the board. You know what? It's on camera. He can still put it out there. He doesn't have to include the last part when he's <laughs> when he's putting on his highlight reel. He wasn't responsible for any of that. So that makes it first and fifteen. Barlow turns around and fakes the handoff, going deep to J to Jamal Long. Little tug of the jersey there on the outside, but no flag. Let's make it second and fifteen here uh, for Sagu. So after the incredible play. Play, all the excitement dies down, and now Sagu faces a second and 15. Jamal Long again, not quite double covered there, but there were two men in the area, and he was blanketed. A little bit of a tug, but that was probably in the area of an uncatchable pass at that point. The refs aren't going to throw a flag for that. Second and 15 here is Barlow. Two wide either side, Dudek in the backfield. Coach Smith calls a timeout time as the play out. clock was expiring. That's the first timeout of the half. So during this timeout, we will uh, get a quick message from our sponsors. Don't go anywhere. Second quarter action. We're coming back your way right here on the Sagu Sports Network. Welcome back to Sagu Sports Network. Sagu with a second and 15 sends Dudek in motion. Three stacked to his left. Back to pass. Clean pocket. Rolls out to his right. Flings it upfield. Almost intercepted. It is caught. Is it brought in? No. Incomplete. Almost an incredible grab on the sidelines off the tip by Jalen Moore. Yeah, Moore really should have had this. It's going to hit him right in the hands. But then nearly, that would have been a tough one. Yeah, clearly out of bounds by number 80 of Jalen Moore going out of bounds. Yeah, nearly had it with toe drag. But it'll bring up a third and 15, like you said. I mean, Sagu in danger of having to punt this one away after they were clicking early on. Barlow is going to be by himself back there. Steps up. Swings it out wide to Dudek over his head, incomplete. So that'll bring up fourth and 15, and Sagu will be forced to punt their first their first punt of the afternoon. And that's a big stand for the Buffaloes, obviously down 13 nothing already. You can't afford to go down 20. And they make the stand when they need to take advantage of the Sagu penalty, one of those procedural penalties, not a hold or a face mask, just drifting downfield a little bit too far with the offensive line that erases the great Johnson catch. And because of it, the Buffaloes will get the ball back, still seeking their first points of the game. On to punt is Seth Green. He's done a, a good job this season of pinning opponents deep. Fair catch, and it does it hit off the hands? I think it does. They're going to rule gonna it. They're going to rule it didn't, and that's almost a too good of a punt right there. That was very fortunate for the Buffaloes yeah. that he did not get a finger on that. That was very close. We'll check the replay here. I mean, he, he didn't respond like he had. Usually, if they touch it, they they come a sprinting after it. Uh, he did run after it. Not it didn't, didn't look like it did. That was that was close to an abject disaster for the Buffaloes, as that would have been a touchdown. Uh, you know, that would have been a touchdown recovery in the end yep. zone had he touched it. But they will bring Gamage back out onto the field, down 13 nothing again, needing a big score here before the half. Here is Gamage. Takes a snap, and he keeps it himself. Tries to go up the middle of the field. There is nothing working there for Christian Gamage. And that's kind of, that's tough to do when you're 5'7". You got the wheels to try to bust it to the outside, but uh, he cuts it back up inside, and that's not where you want to be among the trees. And I mentioned uh, the idea of Arkansas Baptist going eight men in the box uh, pregame. Sagu was stacking eight in the box on that play. Oh, yeah. they, they, yep. they, I think they're picking up that Arkansas Baptist likes to run on first down. And they had a big run on the last drive. And they kind of said that's not going to beat us right now. Really relying on their, their corners to go one-on-one -on -one right now against these receivers. 
There's Gamage. He's back to pass. Play action. Quick hitter to the outside. That is incomplete. That time, good coverage by Lontarius McLean. We've seen that kind of quick hitch, quick stop route on the outside work pretty well between Christian Gamage and receiver Justin Hughes, but that time, good coverage. Zagu definitely adjusting to those routes. They, looks like the defenders are lining up a lot closer to the receivers on this particular drive, knowing that's kind of where Gamage is going to be able to live in this game, throwing those quick routes to the corner. Dare you to beat up over the middle. Third and 10, here's Gamage back to pass, facing pressure. Flushed out of the pocket. He's got room to run. He's got room to do something here. Throws it back across his body. What a catch there. Diving backwards by his receiver, Hughes. It's going to be shy of the first down marker, but you got to think that the Buffaloes don't want to give the ball back to Sagu here. Especially after that play. I mean, what a play by Gamish to stay alive. And Hughes coming back across the field, a diving catch. Wow. Yeah, you almost got to got to reward him by, by saying, yeah, you're going to get this fourth down attempt. You're down 13-0. You need to make something happen in this game to, to, to potentially pull off this huge upset. It's just one yard. Fourth and one. Sagu's defense already today has stopped one fourth down conversion opportunity. But here are the Buffaloes. This is a big play. He's going to run it himself to the outside. Can Sagu keep contain? There is a stand-up right at the marker. I believe he got just enough for the first down. I think so. He was thrown down out of bounds, and the Arkansas Baptist sideline is not very pleased with it. Look at here. He, there's a stand-up here. This looks blown up, but Gamage is going to lean in. And just look at that leg power. strength. Just going in. And yeah, that's the throw right there that's going to make the Buffaloes upset. But what a run by Gamage. He was running in the wrong direction around seven yards deep in his own backfield. Cuts up, gets nailed a yard and a half short, and just powers himself forward. Usually you see a, a fullback or somebody pushing you forward. That was all Gamage on that fourth and one run. So first and 10, Gamage back to pass. Quick header to the outside, has his man, drags the toes inbounds. He has the catch that time to receiver Davian Jenkins. He's got a good gain there on first down, makes it second and one. And you feel like Sagu's got to start wanting to jump some of these routes. And that can mean that's when you pull a pump fake and throw it deep. These Sagu defenders are going to start getting a little bit greedy as they see these, these little quick out routes over and over again. Watch out yeah. for the Buffaloes to try something like that. He's going to keep it himself as Gamage. Cuts it back up field. He's brought down right at that first down marker. It's going to be awfully close. They're going to give it to him. And it looks like they are going to... They're going to make it third down, third and oh. inches. I had seen one uh, official signal po pointing, and the other one must have overruled him because, yeah, this – oh, oh there now, we go. They, now they'll move it. Okay. <laughs> we always need a third, fourth, and fifth opinion on the, on the field to be <laughs> doubly and triply sure. As the chains get set, three and a half left to play here in the first half. New set of downs here for the Buffaloes. Gamage back to pass. Cool in the pocket, takes a deep shot to the sideline, incomplete, out of bounds. And there was a little bit of what I was talking about. Gamage is going to kind of not throw a full pump fake there, but then go deep. Maybe kind of hoping the Sagu was going to jump that route. It, they did not, though. That was easily double covered. Nowhere to go with that ball. Second and 10 here for the Buffaloes. Down 13 nothing. You think they'd love to come down and get a score because Sagu does get the ball back after halftime. So Sagu will start with possession in the third quarter. And you can't not get a score here and then potentially give up one and swing around for another score out of halftime. Gamage will keep it himself. Has a little room to work with. He falls forward. A good carry there on second down. Makes it third and three. Yeah, he has really been showing off with his legs in this game, on the, in this drive in particular. I mean, breaking some tackles there, shedding shoestrings, and then look at this fight forward. I mean, he's going to get ruled down a little bit shorter than I thought he was going to get because his knee hit, but he is not afraid to lean in to a linebacker and fight for extra yardage. The Sagu crowd coming to life here. You hear the drum line on a big third down. Almost jumped out of the free first yep. down. Third and three. 
They do end up handing it off to Newton. Newton cutting it upfield. He's got enough for the first down. He's still on his feet down past the 35, just shy of the 30. Good carry there. Desmond Newton moves the chains, and the Buffalo's offense is in business in Sagu territory. Newton showing some flash ability here, and it's Drake Rodriguez hanging on to the belt almost. Yeah, back of the jersey to, to bring him down. Big gain, and the Buffalo's offense yet again is moving. I mean, for a team that's been shut out in the first half, you almost have nothing but superlatives on this offense. They have looked consistently good, just they need to get in the end zone to prove it. They hand it off to Newton again. Newton is trying to get it outside. What a tackle in the open field. That time on the outside. Yeah, nothing doing there. Saggy was blocked well, but a great one-on-one -on -one tackle Zach made Nelson. by Zach Nelson. He saved a lot of yardage there. Yeah. He was one, one broken tackle away from potentially moving the chains, and then some was Newton, so a good tackle there by Nelson. Clock under a minute and a half to play, so the, set, the first half is ending very soon. Buffalo Here's still have plenty of time. Gamage has forever to throw steps up. He's going to get brought down. Coverage sack that time as... Big number 30, Isaiah Lutusuasue gets himself a sack and makes it third and Timeout. forever. Defense, that's their, that's their second. Time out of the That was a stalemate for around six seconds. The offensive line of the Buffaloes refused to yield, but Sagu's secondary just stood up and kept everybody blanketed to where Gamage didn't have a single person to throw to. Coach Smith calls the timeout. Please put 114 on the game clock. And One hear. minute and 14 seconds They'll put on the game clock. 114 back on the play clock, the game clock rather. Check in at Fort Worth where it's all Wesleyan. And on the left side of the screen, Adam, that's not the stat line we were expecting. Absolutely not, no. A one no. night, a Sagu is currently nursing a 53 yard advantage in this game. That's not what we were expecting at all. Look at the penalties, though. 8 oh. for 65 is something you see typically at the end of a game, and that's at the end of a chippy game. We're at 8 for 65 for the Buffaloes in the first half. And Sagu with four of their own and four for 51 yards. With those two 15-yard uh, pass interference penalties, they're averaging more than 10 yards of penalty, so oh, yeah. not the ones you want to see. Absolutely. So third and very long here for the Buffaloes. This has just got to be about getting it into, again, fourth and theoretical. Back to pass is Gamage. He steps up there. He's head facing heavy pressure. He's going to take off and run. He's got a lot of room to work with. Wow. He's got the first down. Christian Gamage. What a play there on fourth. There is a flag at midfield. Is Sagu going to get bailed out by a holding penalty and, and one in the secondary? The 25. Uh, this could be offsetting. It might erase a beautiful run by Gamage. After the play, dead ball, sportsmanlike conduct, defense number 50. That's his first for disqualification. Half the distance oh, automatic first down. So no, I'm not sure. Off. I'm not sure he even called the second penalty that was over here. The official who threw the flag at the 25 is still pointing at where he put the flag Side down. Line warning on the home team. So there's what the flag was. Not an official penalty, a sideline warning, and then a beautiful run by Christian Gamage to pick up a huge third down conversion plus the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Drake Rodriguez puts them at the 10 yard line. It is first and goal from the nine, Tim. I mean, just what a run from Gamage. That was beautiful. Shoulder faking, powering his way through. Here's oh, Gamage again. He's trying to get to the outside. He's down past the 10. Does he have the corner? Lowers the shoulder and is brought down inside the five-yard line. They're going to mark him down right at the five with 40 seconds left to go here. The Buffaloes do have two timeouts to work with, and it looks like they will end up calling their second timeout here timeout. of the first half. Offense. That's a second of the half. That's a play when you're reading the stat sheet. You're going to say, oh, Christian Gamage, five-yard gain. That was more than a five-yard gain. He is full-on running to the right, nowhere to go, slams on the brakes, has defenders clipping at his heels, cuts all the way back across the field, and nearly made it to the corner for a touchdown. Big five-yard gain, second and goal from the five now with 35 seconds left as the Buffaloes are mighty close to completely redefining the way we feel about this game going into the half. They can make it a one-score game here, and we talked about it earlier. 
we're not too sure about how their field goal kicking is going to go here today. So they could, they, they're sniffing the end zone here. They're going to want to put six, seven points on the board. See a shout out for Noah Gibson on our chat. He has a big sack today. He's been in on a lot of plays. He should have been hard to bring Gambage down on this drive. That's he, tough. Like yeah. I said, on that on that play, he's he's feeling hot right now. That that is a heat check move to cut back across the field like your Dante Hall or something. <laughs> wow, that's a throwback. That's a you know. Oh my I, gosh. I, I pride myself being able to pull out a random player from 2002 <laughs> like that. Here's Gambage back to pass, looking to the middle of the end zone, brought in by Hughes. Touchdown Buffaloes, and they cut it to a one-score game. Looking for the the slant, the. Post pattern for Justin Hughes. He goes up and brings it in. And barring the, I think we're going to see a two point conversion here. It could be 13 to 8. And that's what we, we've seen Gamers throw some passes today. A lot of them have kind of been flutterers, a little bit of arcs, you know, going deep. That pass had some zip on it to get in there. And they will go for two. As we said, we're, we don't really know the status of their field goal kicking. And I think this might be a little clue as to what it is going for two, even though they're down seven. 13 to 6. They're going to damage. He's going to roll out to his right. He's looking for the corner. There is nothing there. Sagu does a really good job of contain and, and spreading out that play. And that's going to go all for naught. So it's going to be a failed two-point conversion. And Sagu will hold on to a 13 to 6 lead with 29 seconds left. Just under 30 seconds left to go in the first half. What an absolute drive wow. from the Buffaloes. Forcing that punt and just marching down the field, truly on the back of Christian Gamage, picking up that third and 18. What an absolute monster run that is. And with less than 30 seconds left to play in the half, the Buffaloes are on the board and down by a single touchdown against the Sagu Lions. We've got a live look in here at it. One of our sister schools, Southeastern University. The fire up 21 nothing. Out in Babson Park, Florida. I like when they put the actual location on I the like screen. That. So I can I do like that. So I can immediately identify uh, where they are. Otherwise, I'm just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> I could I probably guess Florida. It's got that sunshine vibe to it. Never would have guessed. I never would have guessed <laughs> that. <laughs> so here is the kick. It is a very short one. Brought in by the up man. And they're gonna blow it dead. I didn't see a fair catch. I did not see a fair catch signaled for. I didn't see one either, unless one of the guys on the back end called for it. If anybody on your team calls for it, it's dead. Yeah. Take a look here. He's just running up to yeah, it. He There's definitely no call. fair catch call for. He had a lot of room to run too. That's a tough break for Coach Smith and the Lions. They could have set something up there to go for a, a score before the half. And they're, and they're clearly voicing their frustration. Yeah, they'll just get the ball where it was essentially fielded at the 28-yard line. Because yeah, I didn't see anybody, definitely not the, uh, the up man who caught it. Uh, but, and I can't imagine that one of your return guys would have called it when he saw it was 20 yards ahead of him. So, a little bit of a bad break for the Lions. We'll see what they do here with these last 27 seconds and a few timeouts still. Barlow, back to pass. Looking across the middle, or out towards his own sideline, rather. It's fumbled, the ball's on the ground. And it rolls Ooh. out of bounds. And a flag comes in. Uh, I, this might be ruled a kicked ball. I think they might rule that this ball was kicked by Zachary Johnson. They're debating it right now. So he's going to run to the corner. And... Oh, that's yep, exactly yep. what he did. Yep. He, Can't do he, that. And that's one of those you almost don't have to do. Just kind of fall on it and bump it out of bounds yourself. That's an illegal kick, and that will – it was a good first play if you're looking to get in field goal range. As we know, uh, Woodley can hit him from beyond 50. And that's pretty much going to erase Legal the whole kicking play. on the offense. Five-yard five penalty from the spot of the foul. foul. First down. First down. So that's just a five-yard penalty. So they, they'll still have a, a little bit to work with. It'll kind of be up to them now to decide what they really want to try.
Which and you'll also the, see Johnson's thought process of yeah. the worst yeah. case scenario right now is a turnover at our own end of our field. It's actually not It's not that bad of a penalty yeah, I, if you I, think about it. I, I honestly thought it was a 15-yarder uh, from my recollection, but it's only a five. So all things considered, uh, you know, maybe maybe kick the ball more often. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> just give it a shot. We're uh, going to see the ever-rare first and two. Correction. That's a 10-yard penalty oh. from the spot of the kick. I was wrong. They were wrong. I said 15. They said five. We'll split the difference. Split Call the it difference. Ten. So that's going to make it first. And again, a rare first and uh, seven here for Sagu. I don't believe the clock will start again until the ball is snapped. We'll see what they what they go with here. Loss of down. Loss of second downs. Down. It'll be second. So the much less rare second and seven. They had to work it. They, they, there was a thought process you know, there that I, they had to. I will they, forgive them. You don't usually see wide receivers kicking balls out of bounds. That, that is a, a a rarer play in a game. Barlow steps up. He's going to take off and run with it. He's got some room. He's going to duck out of bounds. I think he's got enough for the first down. He wanted to throw deep, but he he, he had a guy pursuing him from behind. He eventually, he's had to step up and pick up the first down. He does do a good job with his legs. Great identification of knowing where that line of scrimmage is. He stopped right there, and it wasn't until the last moment he finally broke it. Zagu pretty much got time. If you want to go field goal, you got time for one quick play here. You can target the middle of the field. You still have a timeout. You try to get down to maybe the 40-yard line or so and see if Kieran Woodley is capable of really punching one through. They do have the wind at their back, so it'll be interesting. There's a little bit of a wind, not a ton. Here's Barlow. He's rolling out. Look for anything downfield. He's going to let it go to Dudik. Dudik brings it in, goes down, out of bounds. That is a catch. Five seconds left on the clock. So it's just, not just, it's quite outside the range of their field goal kicker, that, Kieran Woodley. That'd be a 57-yarder. Now, you got five seconds. You, this is one of those times you could potentially try a real quick three-yard. Let's take like Kieran Woodley out. Defense. So Buffalo is a take third a and final timeout for the half. They take a timeout. Sagu does have timeouts to work with here. You think you could hit a quick hitter across the middle and pick up five? But five seconds is tough. Five seconds is really tough because there's no room for error. If there's any delay, you run the half out. So you'd love to be able to, as Texas Wesleyan has dropped a 50 burger on Wayland in the first half. Pioneers, oh pioneers. You, you talked about Wayland being one of the more disappointing teams so far this season for you, and they are not disappointing in your, uh, your, your analysis of that one. 53 points, looking at 54 in the first half. Texas Wesleyan on pace for over 100 points. Wow. They might ease up in the second half. <laughs> you think so, but Texas Wesleyan takes they take sports pretty seriously up there in Fort Worth. They may just keep the starters in for another 30 minutes. At the half, Langston's up on line 9 nothing, so he must have had a flip early on there of having the Scots. Ah, the there, there we go. Okay. So here we go, 57 yards, a little bit of wind at its back. I wouldn't be surprised to see, but the Buffaloes, they won't drop somebody back to potentially return this if it's short. Here is Woodley. If he gets this, he's the player of the week, third week in a row. Snap. Oh, they oh, fake it. Woodley oh, gets crushed. Oh, my goodness. That's going to end the half. Sagu tries That's for the, the fake. For the first half. Oh, my goodness. That was almost disastrous. Again, Woodley just, he's laughing. He goes, oh, they, they read that. <laughs> oh, you never want to see your kicker get hit like that. But, my goodness, that play was blown up from the start. I'm not sure if he was running it or throwing it I could there was nobody running routes down the field it was I, it's hard to tell I, I, I felt like it looked like there was a blocking pattern Sagu was just gambling on the idea that the Buffaloes were gonna be completely caught off guard with that but they were not they as we've already seen them block one extra point we know they can bring the pressure and Woodley, the, at least he didn't go Gero Uprimi in Super Bowl seven and, and try to throw it there and get picked off. That that play was that's dangerous because you, you might turn it over, you might get your kicker hurt. It, it, it's hard to tell what you were looking at doing there. It's that, that was that was bizarre. So going into halftime, Sagu is up thirteen to six, a one score game. They will start with possession in the second half. Our sideline reporter Jazz Williams is with defensive coordinator Jared Hutchins. Jazz, down to you. Thanks, Adam. Coach, only six points given up in the first half. Describe this performance by your defensive unit. 
Oh, well, we can be better. I really believe that. We just got to finish tackles. Zero's pretty slippery, so we've just got to do better at wrapping him up, getting him to the ground. Other than that, um, clean up some get, – give some underneath help for the comebacks and, and those things, and uh, we should be all right. Need to get pressure with four. That would help too. What does this team need to do to come away with the homecoming win today? I'll just play discipline and then play every whistle, whistle to whistle. You know, I mean, play every play like it's the last, and, and we'll handle it. Thanks, Coach. Back to you, Adam. Thank you, Coach Hudgens. That is going to do it for the first half. But I will say, stay tuned because we have a special halftime uh, show for you here. It's going to be the coronation of the homecoming court here for Segu as it is homecoming 2021. So don't go anywhere. We're going to go live down to the sideline as they get ready for the festivities right here live on the Segu Sports Network. And now Brayden is escorting freshman princess Abby Schatzline. <laughs> Abby's greatest success at Sadu so far has been creating the freshman class of 2025 Instagram page. Her favorite TV shows are The Office, Heartland, Heartland and, Project and Project Runway. Runway. This year's this sophomore, year's sophomore prince, prince is Jackson, Jackson Roof. Roof. Jackson would like his classmates to remember him as someone who wasn't afraid to do what God told him, and he would change the world by getting a Jersey Mike's in Waxahachie. Jackson is escorting Kirsten Stoll, our sophomore princess. If Kirsten won a million dollars, she would buy a bunch of jeans, boots, and a new car. Her favorite place to fellowship is in prayer ministry events for SMA. Our junior class prince is Joe Rodriguez. Joe is a church leadership major from San Antonio. His special talent is ambidextrous, and his favorite memory at Sagu is the Sagu snowstorm. Escorted by Joe Rodriguez is your junior prince, Alexiana South. Alexiana was led to Sagu when she received a vision from God. And after she leaves Sagu, she would like her classmates to remember her as the first Cambodian junior homecoming princess. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will present the senior nominees for homecoming king and queen. One thing that I would change about this world is gas prices, bro. Them gas prices are way too high. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Mills, and I'm an intercultural student. My advice that I would give to the infant freshmen is to buy a mini waffle maker because those things can make anything. Um, the place that I fellowship most on this Aggie campus is Abby Escamilla's room, specifically her couch. And then the one secret talent that I possess is that I can scream really loud. Hey guys, I'm Ezra De La Garza. I'm the original of the It's probably the most embarrassing moment of my childhood. It's almost drowning in a koi pond. Ask me about it. I really hope that all of my classmates remember how intentional I was with each of them. And my biggest success here at SAGU is that I can't remember how intentional I was with each of them. And my biggest success here at SAGU is loving the guys on my hall. Shout out third floor British guys. Hi, my name is Abby and my top three favorite professors are Dr. Clarence Dr. Roosevelt, and Dr. Murphy. I'm David Dorsett. I'm a history of If I could go anywhere in the world, I would go to St. Petersburg, Russia. And that's because there's a museum in there called Parentage. It would take three days just to get everything in the museum. Uh, what first took me to Sagu was actually my GPS. Actually, I just couldn't really picture myself going anywhere. Hey y'all, my name is Elizabeth Clark. I'm the first year of Sagu. Now, I'm going to be my entire freshman year. 
the people who've had the biggest impact on my life here at Side View would probably have to be Pastor Andy and Pastor Sarah. I love y'all. And the biggest success here for me has definitely been making connections and building relationships with the girls on my hall and in my dorm. I love you, Cedar! I've traveled uh, ever is New Mexico, um, and then uh, the first person I met on campus is Drew Stellar, so that's my boy. Hey, what's up, everyone? My name Please give a round of applause for this year's Homecoming Royalty. In just a moment, Greg Thurstenson, President of the Alumni Council, will be presenting a $1,000 scholarship to the two outstanding individuals announced as King and Queen. And now presenting the crown and scepter, our last year's homecoming king and queen, Josiah Taylor and Chloe Millen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the 2021 homecoming king is Kendrick Williams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the 2021 homecoming queen is Abby Escamilla. Congratulations, King Kendrick and Queen Abby and the entire 2021 homecoming court. Let's welcome our 2021-2022 SAGU Cheerleaders! 
They are coming in this season with a bronze bid, the Nationals in Daytona, Florida, and many new skills added from their first year attending the NCA cheer camp at SMU. Our captains are Savannah C. from May Pearl, Texas, and Emily Black from Orlando, Florida. Here are your SAGU cheerleaders. forging relationships centered around faith and finance. Our purpose is to provide financial solutions to help you succeed while we tithe 10% of our annual earnings to ministry and community organizations. Your mercy is never ending. Your kindness never fading. Jesus, you're always with me. The NAIA level is highly competitive. Um, I know that a lot of NCAA schools will have opening round games with a lot of NAIA schools, and those are very close games a lot of times. And um, it's a highly competitive level, and it's been a great, great situation for me. And I think it's a great situation for a lot of my teammates and a lot of my peers.
Honey, have you applied to that school yet? Not really into purple. At AGCU, we are committed to forging relationships centered around faith and finance. Our purpose is to provide financial solutions to help you succeed while we tithe 10% of our annual earnings to ministry and community organizations. Your mercy is never ending, your kindness never fading, Jesus you're always with me, you're always with me. At Southwestern, we endeavor to offer more than the average college curriculum. Producing men and women whose lives are pleasing to God. And that's worth everything. Welcome back to the SAGU Sports Network. We are ready for half number two between the Arkansas Baptist Buffaloes and your hometown SAGU Lions here on homecoming Saturday. Tim, it's a it's a tight one. We were not expecting this here today. No, I mean, you just look back at Arkansas Baptist games this year and you've come into this game, it's homecoming, you feel pretty comfortable. You're like, hey, you know, we probably, we probably got this in the bag. We are talking about maybe seeing some second and third stringers. Not hardly. The Buffaloes have shown up to play in this one, both offensively and defensively. Only six points on offense, but that's not for lack of trying. They nope. moved the ball consistently yep. through the first half. And here we are, just a seven-point game. Long drives by both teams. A very low-scoring game uh, between the Lions and the Buffaloes. A couple of unfortunate errors if you're a Lions fan. Jordan Barlow with the one interception in Buffalo's territory and then the ineligible receiver downfield penalty that negated a beautiful one-handed catch and run by Zachariah Johnson that almost certainly would have ended up in points because they were down inside the red zone. Yeah. So two potential scoring drives taken off the board held Sagu to 13 points, but take nothing away from this Buffalo's offense. They have sustained long drives. It's the same story for both offenses. Sagu's injured Buffalo's territory on all five of their drives, <laughs> only had 13 points. The Buffaloes have entered Sagu's territory in four of their five drives had an interception, had to settle for a long punt, had a turnover on downs, and of course the touchdown to end the uh, first half. Onside oh, kick here to start the half, and it's recovered by the Buffaloes. They cannot advance it, but here is the catch. The receiving player called for a fair catch, and I believe you have to let him have a chance at it. They're going to rule he contacted him Otherwise, this is perfect. This is a heads-up play to call for the fair catch. To catch. Interference on the kicking team. Yeah. That is a heads-up play. 15 yards. First down. Big heads-up play to call for the fair catch because as soon as you call for that, that ball is yours. Even on an onside kick, 
you are entitled to make a play on that ball. So because of that, otherwise this is a flawless onside kick. Flawless. He doesn't do anything wrong. He just goes up and gets the ball. That's just a heads up, smart football move. Nothing athletic about it, nothing special about it. Just knowing the rules of the game and calling for that fair catch and taking away what would have been a huge, huge start to the half for the Buffaloes. And instead, Sagu will have possession here at the 31. He'll hand it off to Dudek. Dudek on first down. He's got some room up the middle. Tries to cut it outside. He's got some more room to run. He's got a receiver downfield with him to block. Down to the five. Into the end zone. Did he get in? No ruling on the field yet. Touchdown, Sagu Keaton Dudek. All the way from 31 yards out. Takes it himself. Puts Sagu back up two scores on the first play of the second half. Quick swing here. And watch Dudek cut to the outside. And right here, he's going to switch the ball into his other hand so that he can lead with his shoulder into the end zone. And yeah, does just get just yep. enough for a 31-yard touchdown run. Obviously, great field position to start after the onside kick and penalty. And then Dudek does the rest in 12 seconds into the half. Sagu's going to push this back to a two-possession game, 20-7. to seven. The extra point up and good, 20-6. to six. 26. Now Sagu leads. They needed a score to go back up two scores, and it only takes them one play, 31 yards to do it, yeah. aided by the catch interference, the kick interference, rather, by the Buffaloes in Sagu. Puts the foot on the gas and back out in front, two scores. And you love to see that from Dudek. He immediately knew the situation. Switching at that point, he knows the sidelines to his right, so nobody's going to get this ball. Put it in your right hand. And because that, he's able to lean in to score that touchdown. With that run, Dudek's going to go over 100 yards rushing on the day. His second rushing touchdown, he has one receiving and 71 yards receiving. So doing some quick fuzzy math here. He's at 173 total yards in this game with three touchdowns. Dudek showing up as he has all season long. Sagu back up by 14 points and a lightning quick start to the second half. Ball falls off the tee. A little bit of wind here in Lumpkin Stadium. Not too much to interfere with anything of concern in this one. The kick from Kieran Woodley is a good one. Fair caught or fair cut, fair catch called for and brought it at the five. And the Buffaloes will take over at the 25 yard line, looking to answer back after Sagu's one play lightning quick scoring drive. And you look at their offensive stats in the first half, nothing to sneeze at. Very balanced, too. 91 yards rushing, 95 yards passing, 50% conversion on third downs. Uh, just those penalties have hurt them on both sides of the ball. Uh, and none more so than that one they had right there, which, I mean, it, it's just unfortunate. I mean, that that's you're not going to pull off and not make that onside kick catch. Uh, so it's just unfortunate that you got penalized 15 yards for it. But even so, 9 for 69 on the game. Gamage hands it off to Nance. Nance looking for room. He picks up just about two there on first down. Negligible gain, but when you look at how this game started, where I think their first four or five carries all went for negative yards, they've done a lot better job of establishing it. A lot of that has been because of Gamage uh, showing off that he can run, giving them you know two threats in the backfield every time they snap the ball. Injury. Injury. Time out. Time out. Injured Buffalo on the field. Looks like that might be a cramp just from the way that even the players were reacting around. They're saying, he'll go down, go down. If it's just a cramp, go down. Don't don't cost us a timeout or anything by trying to get him to the out get to the outside. We are gonna go live to our side. selected you to be homecoming king and queen i feel so honored it was incredibly unexpected but i'm so grateful for everyone supporting and loving on us yes i feel honored as well like man like i just i can't even put it into words man i really do appreciate the student body we love them so much and they love us as well so super grateful how has sagu prepared you guys for your future endeavors 
Um, I'm planning on being a worship pastor and doing ministry. So um, being involved in like ministry classes, um, being the opportunity to lead in chapel worship, um, and just being in different leadership positions on campus, um, it allows me to feel equipped and be ready for um, what I'm going to do in the future. So. I'm going into full-time ministry as well, and so being a part of uh, the worship team as well as Res Life, just um, being a part of the different leadership organizations has really helped prepare and steward um, the gifts going into that and uh, just giving me the best experience possible here. Thank you guys so much, and congratulations. Back to you, Adam. Thank you, Jazz. There you have it, the homecoming king and queen, Kendrick Williams and Abby Escamilla. You are 2021 homecoming king and queen here for SAGU. Announced at halftime if you happen to step away from your TV during that time. Coming out of the injury timeout, second and eight here for the Buffaloes. And it looks like the injured uh, Buffalo lineman was Luis Varela. He has been taken over to the sideline. He's walking on his own power. So that is a good sign. Nothing too serious, we hope. Second and eight. Here is Gamage. Sends a man in motion. He keeps it, in, or he hands it off, rather, his man to the outside. Flags come flying in in the air of holding. Decent run by Nance, but it's more than likely going to be negated here. As you kind of have a dog pile, you have block in the back, holding. It's going to take your pick anytime the entire, both teams kind of collide in the middle there. And the referee was asking if Sagan wanted to decline it. I can't imagine that no, they would. not at all. Not with it being third Holding. and one. Offense, number 56, 10 yards from the previous spot, replay. Sometimes you'll decline a penalty to bring up third down instead, but, but not in a situation where no. it's a third and one versus second and 18. So Sagu, of course, accepts that holding call. The 10th penalty of the game, and we have played one half in one minute. So our, uh, our Arkansas Baptist definitely struggling. Absolutely. That was Jaden Coakley on the hold. So that'll make it second and 18. Here's Gamage. Play action, back to pass. He rolls out to his left, has pressure in his face, and brings him down. Excellent tackle in the open field by Dalton Spencer. And watch Drake Rodriguez. He's not going to make the sack, but watch him just destroy all the blockers. At this point, Gamage <laughs> is on his own. Uh, Drake Rodriguez clears the field. There's nobody there to, to pick him up or the, the blitzing, uh, you know, linebacker coming there from the center. So Drake Rodriguez wreaks some havoc, and it's Spencer who finishes it up with a sack to bring up third and 20. Third and very long here for the Buffalo. And we're going to get a false start here. It's going to move him back even further. All kinds of movement. Nance went in motion too early. The offensive line jumped. False start. Offense, number 67. Five-yard penalty, replay, third down. So they get Jalen Jack on the false start, but they pretty much had their pick of who jumped early there. Receivers, linemen, running backs, looked like everybody jumped early on that one. So that'll make it third and 25 from their own 10. That situation where a couple of guys heard the wrong snap count. Yeah, when you have that many guys jump, there was some sort of miscommunication where they all thought they were going on two, and it was actually three. Back to pass. Here's Gamage. Looks like they're setting up a screen. He's running for his life. That might be Brought a down into the end. He gets rid of it with his left hand, but that's going to be a safety. Regardless, it'll be intentional grounding, but that will put two points on the board. Drake Rodriguez got his hands on Christian Gamage and did not let go. Gamage is just trying to stay up for his life. And keeps him in the end zone. That's what happens so often. Now, oh, it looks like Rodriguez got his hand around to the face. I don't think they're calling that. So Sagu will get the two points and then the free kick with possession here. And it actually looks like they ruled forward progress had stopped. There's, so no, there was no flag. No incomplete pass. They had just ruled a straight up sack in the end zone. But yeah, you see so often that you've got to get a guy in the end zone and they're just able to get out past that one yard line and avoid the safety. But Drake Rodriguez hanging onto that jersey pulls Gamage in. Extending that sack record he currently owns here for the Sagu Lions football program gets himself another one, his third of the season. 
Aggie will go up 16, and they will have good field position to start this drive as well, coming off the free kick from the 20, as they just push them back, back-to-back -back sacks on Gamage. Throw them back a couple of penalties, set up a third and a mile, and Sagu defense cleans up from there. Sagu return team setting up at the 40-yard line. So like you said, they are looking at having very good field position here. Here is the free kick. It is high. It is away. It's brought in just shy of the 40. Looking to set something up here. Cuts back across field. Cuts back. He's going to get brought down just shy of the 45-yard line. So that is where the Sagu offense will take over. We got a live look in on that Langston Lion game. Langston has now pushed it out to a 16 to nothing lead, a game that was very tight through the first half. Meanwhile, of course, Wesleyan running all over Wayland Baptist still. And OPSU and Louisiana College tied seven apiece. We, uh, we, I didn't hedge my bets on it. I still said OPSU, <laughs> but I definitely said, watch out Louisiana College. You Absolutely. heard Corey say they're going to get a win this year, undoubtedly. Absolutely. And maybe today's the day. Still the first quarter, but they are even with the Aggies. First and ten. Here's Barlow. Hands it off to Dudek. Dudek has room up the middle. And how you like that, just off the touchdown, Dudek rips off another huge gain there on first down. And just drive a Mack truck through that hole. Every single shift, everybody blocking perfectly. Uh, the Buffalo's not taking the best routes, but Dudek isn't touched till he hits the 35-yard line. You don't usually see a guy go that untouched with guys ahead of him still. That was just a beautiful job of clearing the road <laughs> right down the middle for Duke. This offensive line is feasting. Here's Barlow, quick hitter to the outside. Flag does come in. This one looks like it may be an illegal formation. Zachary Johnson fighting for every yard. Illegal formation or Zachariah Johnson might have blocked a half second too mm -hmm. early on the outside. Is, yeah, he's, he seems to be thinking it's going to be on him. He's pleading his case. Sideline warning. Oh boy. On the Another offense, one. that's their second. Five yard penalty. Replay. So it wasn't on a player. First down. Wasn't on second a player down. at all. So sideline infraction side, results in a five yard penalty, makes it second and. So the play will 13. stand. The play yeah. stands in that situation. It's, it's, even though it's a pre-snap penalty, since it wasn't involved in the play, it'll be five yards tacked on at the end. So, yeah, second and 13 now. Here's Barlow. Hands it off to Dudek. Dudek has room to run, cuts it to the outside, lowers the shoulder, gets brought down just a yard short of the first down marker. That's going to make it third and one. And this was the game the Buffaloes did not want to see. Just chunks of yardage being gobbled up by Keaton Dudek. He has a run of almost 30 on this drive. Easily picks up 13, 14 there to make it third and short after already having a 31-yard touchdown run in this short half. Third and two, they mark him... About a yard and a half shy of that first down marker. So here's Dudek again, cuts it. He's got the first down, lowers the shoulder inside the 10 yard line. They're mark him down right at the 10. So Sagu's got it first and goal from the 10 yard line. His drive has been all Keaton Dudek. And why not? He's just been your best player on offense today. Let him keep working. Yeah, working it on the run and when they throw out to him as well. And you love seeing that he hits him at the 15 yard line. Goes forward six more yards. And here's Dudek again, cuts it up inside. He's got another one, walks into the end zone. Only had to break one tackle. And Keaton Dudek's got his third rushing touchdown of the day. His fourth overall, Keaton Dudek. Wow, what a performance by the Sagu running back who puts Sagu up 28 to six. We were talking about him padding his stats pregame. There hasn't been any stat padding in this game as it stayed pretty competitive for most of this afternoon. But nonetheless, four touchdowns for Dudek, three on the ground as, yeah, he's getting a little bit closer to that J.P. Lowry record. That's something we'll be watching the entire month of October and through Absolutely. the rest of the season. Nine rushing touchdowns on the season for Keaton Dudek. 
low snap, the hold's down, the kick is up, and it is good. And Sagu will go up 29 to six. So they take advantage of the good, good field position after the safety uh, from Drake Rodriguez. They drive down, put seven on the board, and now this is starting to look like a little bit what we thought it would at the start of this game. Yeah, after 30 minutes of truly a stalemate. I mean, yeah. when you look at a 13-6 game where both teams had problems inside their opposing field position, uh, now in less than five minutes, Sagu has put 16 points on the board and has stretched it to a 23-point lead. Now it's just up to Arkansas Baptist to see what they can do to try to cut this lead back a little bit more, keep any hope alive after they looked very solid in the first half. Definitely has not been the start. Of course, we talk about that. If, if, if you want to look at one play to shift the entire momentum of this game, it's that onside kick. Yeah. And if it's not for that heads up fair catch call, Arkansas Baptist got the ball at the 45-yard line down seven to start this half. So that is a, a true pivot moment in this game right now because Sagu scored on the very next play. Here is Kieran Woodley on for the kick, and it is a deep one. Fair catch called for and brought in, bobbled, and then picked up. That, and that was an inadvertent whistle. They blew the whistle as soon as it touched we him. We have an inadvertent whistle, re-kick. Re oh, wow, they're going to make him re-kick it. Interesting. Yep. Because as yep. soon as you blow the inadvertent whistle, it messes with everything. And so the, the, the guy's held up. Yeah, that could have been a little bit more of a competitive dash to the ball had you not had the inadvertent whistle. I understand the referee. You see it hit his arms. You just assume you blow the whistle, make sure nobody gets hurt. But in that situation, he dropped it, and now that was anybody's ball to go get. All that to probably have it put a 25 here in 15 I, I seconds I think anyways. that's what's going to happen, yeah. <laughs> but you got to play by the rules. you got to make sure you dot all the I's and cross all the T's. So here is Kieran Woodley on again for another consecutive kickoff here. Let's see if they try anything different. Maybe mix it up a little bit. The kick is off and it is again deep. This one goes into the end zone for a touchback. So that is where the Buffaloes will take over at the 25 yard line, first and 10, looking to get a score that they desperately need to try to stay in this one with Sagu, as it feels like Sagu with all the momentum in the world right now. Look at those overall stats on the game. Christian Gamage, not necessarily doing a ton with his arm besides that touchdown pass, but 15 rushes for 42 yards. He has been all over the field, just been a workhorse today. Action has resumed out in Fort Worth. Texas Wesleyan back across midfield already. They'll, they'll probably cross 60 today. <laughs> I'm guessing. Here's a handoff to Newton. Newton looking to the outside. He's got a little room to run. He's going to get brought down out of bounds. Just at the marker. It looks like he may have enough yeah. for the first down. Newton showed that speed today to get outside. He's been a hard man to beat to the corner, quick enough at least, and they're going to mark him. Just, oh, yeah, he's got enough. Yep. Yeah, yeah the, the nose of the football is touching the 35, so he does get the first down. They'll move the chains. First and 10 here for the Buffaloes. Going to hand it off to Newton again. This time Newton stood up, no gain that time. Zach Nelson called his name a couple of times today. He's been in on the quarterback and on the line. He's just going to come untouched into that gap. That's what a linebacker's supposed to do. When the offensive line makes a gap, you go fill it. And Absolutely. He, he plugs that hole and brings Newton to the ground. Actually, a loss of one on the play, so it makes it second and 11. Here's Gamage. He is back to pass. He has a deep drop. Pressure in his face immediately. Looking to run and make something happen. Here he goes out to the races again. He's got enough for the first down. There is Christian Gamage showing that he can get it done on the ground with his feet. It's so dangerous. That is a something with nothing play. The pocket has collapsed. There are lions everywhere. Newton, I'm sorry, Gamage has to cut all the way to his left until any sort of hole opens up. He slithers his way through it, picks up a first down into Sagu territory. Gamage just doing everything he can today. You love seeing that fire from the freshman quarterback. And he hands it off to Nance this time. Nance looking to get around the edge, and he picks up two on first down, makes it second and eight. Russell Nance on the run. Back about Keanu Belcher. 
Sagu all over that, but Nance was able to rumble just enough to make sure it was positive. It's the Buffaloes again have crossed midfield. And it's, there's been way more production from this Buffaloes offense than the scoreboard shows. Absolutely. They, they have had a lot of fight in them. They just keep on pushing the ball. It has not just been three and out after three and out or anything of that sort. They have been fighting all game. It's just been completing these drives. Gamage, he gets his own man pushed into him by Drake Rodriguez. He's running for his life again, this time brought down before he can get to the sticks. That's going to bring up third and five, third and four, call it. Yeah, even staying on his feet there. Obviously, the strength of Drake Rodriguez just throwing his, his blocker back into the backfield. But Gamage gets, stays alive, brings up a third and four. He just is fighting on every single play. Third and mid here for the Buffaloes. Here's Gamage, two out wide to his left. Man in the backfield is Newton, fakes a handoff. He's back to pass, Drake Rodriguez gets his hand on him. Doesn't quite bring him down and he does end up going down. Drake Rodriguez with his second sack of the afternoon is gonna bring up fourth and 12. Yeah, grabs him around the ankle and somehow he stays up. It was only because he lost the ball that he finally had to just seed that he didn't want to do any more damage. Had to fall on the ball while trying to stay up. Rodriguez, just such a disruptor. He almost blew Gamage up on the last play. That time he does get to him. And you mentioned him adding to that overall record sack total. Well, he's added a couple today on top of a safety. On to punt from midfield. Almost blocked again. Sagu bringing heavy pressure on their punts. Oh. And it's muffed. Can Sagu get it back? They do. Falling on top of it was Christopher Bacos. And that was a risky, risky play by the return man. You, it does one of those situations, you don't mind the ball bouncing, diving forward for it like this, just so inadvisable, as the pretty much up by 23, the only thing you can do in this game is turn the ball over deep in your own territory. Sagu, lucky they got back on top of that one, retained possession, and will send Barlow back out to the field with a 23-point lead, just a little over halfway through with the third quarter. Barlow, new man in the backfield. He's going to hand it off to him. That is Dakivion Rose with his first carry of the afternoon. Dudek might be getting a drive off right there, and depending on how this drive goes, might be getting the rest of the game off as he has carried the load here in the second half with two touchdown runs. Every touchdown of the game from Sagu has come via Dudek one way or the other. Sagu will already kind of start letting that clock be their friend in this one. No hurry to get back to the line, keeping the ball on the ground. Second and 10, here's Barlow. Fakes a handoff, swings it out wide to Zachariah Johnson. Johnson lowers the shoulder, tiptoes down the sideline, has just barely enough. He's not quite at the stick. Actually, they are going to signal first down. Yeah. So he's got just enough to move the chains. I wasn't sure he's going to quite get it, but credit a block up front by Tyson Nanette that made a one-on-one -on -one move, and you know that Johnson's gonna be able to, with his overall height, kinda push his way over and lean for that first down. Six foot two, they said just enough by the nose of the football, moves the chains. Barlow hands it off. Nothing really going there for his running back that time, Rose. He's gonna have just about three on first down. Make it second and seven. So far, Buffaloes are handling the backup running back a little bit better than they were with Dudek. Part of that also might be just a complete focus on the run game now after it's burned you so much here in the second half. Barlow keeps it, pitches it out, and nothing working there. Good job that time. They got it to Isaac Gowdy, it looks like. Yeah, Isaac Gowdy. Adrian Rowell. Oh, no, rather, there was Adrian Rowell, the, the return man, yeah. the dangerous return man, rather, who takes that pitch and turns it into two yards, make it third and five. And that was good defense from the Buffaloes because that was a textbook executed triple option. Every single step of it, Sagu did right. 
And the Buffaloes just stayed man on man, kept their eyes up, and kept that from going for any more than just a two yard gain. Bring up third and five. Here is Barlow. He's going to hand it off. Here's Rose. Rose lowering the shoulder. Coming up short. It's going to be fourth and two. Yeah, he will be shy. Barlow looking to Coach Smith to see what the play is going to be. And I don't think they're moving at this point. They're going to stay on the field and see if they can just keep the clock moving, keep this drive going right at midfield. We'll see what the play call is here on fourth and two. Uh, at the very least, we know that Barlow is a master at pulling guys off sides. Oh, absolutely. For, from their own 46. Got to think there's a hard count here. Nope. They do enough snap to get Barlow. Keeps it himself. He's going to have enough for the first down. And then up the middle. Lowers his shoulder. Carrying defenders with him down to the 30. Pushing the pile. Look at Jordan Barlow getting involved on the ground game. Huge gain on fourth down. And Sagu moves the chains into Buffalo territory. And that's Jordan Barlow looking to the side line probably having a quick coded talk with coach smith saying hey we've run 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 and look at how much the buffaloes bid on that if i fake this handoff on the read option and i start running i'm gonna have plenty of room to take it down the field and he does gets it down just outside the 25 yard line and fighting the whole way. He did not slide. He was fighting for those yards. So here's Rose. Rose makes a man miss. Cuts it inside the five. Down at the three-yard line. First big run of the day for DeKevion Rose. Gets the Sagu Lions offense in a goal-to-go situation down at the four. And we mentioned how they had zoned in a little bit more on the run. The Sagu offensive line is still just consistently dominating. That hole was just too much to deal with. As it doesn't matter who's carrying right now, they're just grabbing 20-yard chunks at a time. Quick hitter to Jamal Long. It falls incomplete. Little run-pass option there for Barlow, looking for his receiver on the outside. That might have been more of just a straight play action because you got to give your receiver some love. I mean, they, they love winning. <laughs> they love being up 23. They, they, they'll love being up 30 here in a second if you have to punch it on the ground. But you got to target Jamal Long a few times, even if it's, you know, <laughs> even if everything else is working for you on the ground. You know, those, 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 those guys, they need, their, they need their targets. Here's Barlow, hands it off to Rose. Rose cuts it up into the end zone. Sagu on the board again. It goes up 35-6 to six by way of the rushing attack. That time into the end zone, DeKevion Rose with his first touchdown of the season. The sophomore running back stands 6'2", 220. Very different back than Keaton Dudick, but gets it done all the same, and Sagu goes up 29, barring an extra point, up 30. Yeah, you love getting to see these younger guys step up, get some plays under their belt, and look good on that drive. This Woodley. Puts it up, and it is a 30-point Sagu lead, a game that a mere 12 and a half minutes ago was just a seven-point lead. And, you know, there were probably some some nervous moments. Uh, you know, if we were even marking up here at halftime, of just like, Absolutely. okay, okay, yep. this is not what you expected. But Sagu has come out. We said pregame, this is a take-care-of-business game. Don't let it be a trap game. Let it be a take-care-of-business game. I asked in the first half, are there mouse traps on the Sagu sideline? Because it was feeling very trappy uh, since then. In this second half, Sagu has completely taken care of business. It was just a, over, just right at two and a half left in the third quarter. I've seized complete control of this one against the Buffaloes. Here comes Kieran Woodley out to kick for the Sagu kickoff team. We saw some uh, interesting shenanigans last time with the, the inadvertent whistle. We'll see if they have it together here this time. And I imagine Saggy will be content to keep on just popping that up in the air and starting at the 25-yard line. Your defense has succeeded thus far today in just allowing six points. And indeed. Oh, it's going to be oh. returned this time. Interesting. Down past the 20. Makes another man miss. Uh -oh. Now he's got to pass the sideline. Down past the 40. Down past the 45. And driven out of bounds. So the first time we see a return. I'd say let Hughes cook. He's been, yeah. he's been calling fair catches all game. He finally takes one at the fourth, at the two-yard line. 
and is going to give the Buffaloes their best starting field position of the game. Just shy of midfield is Justin Hughes on the return. Yeah, great starting field position now for Gamage and crew. A 47-yard kickoff return as he shed, the, shed one tackler, and then it was just a race to the, to the corner. So Hughes, he, Hughes has had a couple of big catches as well. He's absolutely. had a solid game. Gamage keeps it himself, looking to get to the outside, brought down quickly by a host of Lions. Good job containing on that play by the Lions front four. Yeah, can, they have not allowed many of the running backs to get to the second level. Maybe on two or three carries have they ever gotten to that second level. Gamage has broken a couple of big ones, but those have almost all exclusively been on busted plays where he's just pulling magic tricks. Everything else, Sagu has held to the line within two or three yards of it. Second and nine here for the Buffaloes. They're going to hand it off this time around the outside. Beautiful tackle there on the edge. They hand it to the big running back that time, Naquan Johnson. And Damaris Heron just lowering the shoulder and jolting him. I got worried there for a second. Heron was on the ground for a couple of seconds afterward. I was worried that he might have thrown a little bit too much into that hit. <laughs> but he popped up fine right afterwards. Third, Makes it third and nine. Yeah, third and nine right at midfield. Buffaloes, you'd love to be able to take advantage of this field position. You get the ball at the 49-yard line, you'd love to be able to get down back in, deep into Sagu territory. Gamage going back across the field, has a man out of bounds. A flag comes in on the opposite side. I'm not sure what this one will be. Uh, it's it's thrown, in the, thrown in a weird part of the field. I, I don't I really know who's going to get flagged in this situation. It's in the area of Kevion Davis. I'm not sure. There is no penalty. So eligible downfield. It was an incomplete pass. Fourth down. Well, that shouldn't change whether it was an eligible downfield or not. Uh, obviously, Saggy would have declined had it been there, but that's the second time that Gamage has completely had his running back on Russell Nance on that wheel route. Oh, yeah, it's it, wide it, open every time. On the turnover on downs they had in the first quarter, if he had hit him, it would have been a touchdown. Right there, if he would have hit him, it would have been an easy first down. So just unfortunate they haven't been able to make those connections for the Buffaloes. They have to low, this one away. Low line drive punt takes a, a good bounce. That's tough. They get a pick. Here's Rao. He's going to get around the edge. Rao's got some blockers in front of him. The flag does come in. Every flag. Every, I think every official no longer has a flag I, in their pocket. The center judge still has his. Oh, okay. Oh, we good. got a hat. Okay, we got a hat. We got oh. four flags and a hat. Put oh. them all in a pile. <laughs> A that, lot of that kind of defines both teams in this game as far as penalties. There's four flags and a hat at the end of this play. We'll see what the call or calls I, are. Anytime a hat comes out, that means there was a second call. I don't know why they don't give the refs two flags. <laughs> they have to throw their hat. You, you know your hat never feels right when you throw it off. You have to adjust it back on, you know, afterwards. <laughs> feels wrong for five minutes until you get it just right. Give them two flags. How tough is that? lot to figure yeah, out they're, they're a long discussion here for our officials especially if you have a lot of spot fouls you're having to discuss where each one was as to maybe which one the buffaloes want to accept if you have multiple blocks in the back you know which one happened where and they are punting every which way during the return holding return team number 31 after the play dead ball sportsmanlike conduct on the kicking team that'll be 15 yards First down, Sagu. So it'll be 10 yards from the spot of the foul for the holding and then 15 after that 10 for the dead ball after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. And that will put Arkansas Baptist at over 100 yards of penalties in this game. Uh, it's obviously when you got a young team, that can, that can be common. But in a game that they were really close from the first half, those penalties hurt them a lot. And right there, and it's free play Barlow. Free play for Barlow. He's taking a shot deep down the field. Incomplete. There's no flag. Oh, there's the flag. Okay, I was about to say. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. It's at the far end of the field. I was about to say, hold on. I think Barlow might have just thrown an incompletion thinking he had a free play. Now it came out right at Offside. the beginning. Offside. Defense, number 44, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And I don't think we've updated from the last penalty. That'll be lucky number 13 yep. of penalties for the game. 
while the Lions have six for 66. So just a lot of laundry on the field for yeah. both of these teams today. Make it first and five here for Barlow. Takes a snap, he's gonna give it to Rose. Rose gets popped and stopped after a four yard gain. That's Justice Hampton coming in with a hard hit on Rose. We haven't really seen the Buffaloes get many chances. It's been a lot of dragging guys down from behind or just kind of shoving out of bounds. That's really the first hard hit we've seen the Buffaloes be able to lay, and I think the Lions are going to be very content to let that be the final play of the third quarter, a third quarter that they racked up 23 points in. Really did turn this game around. It, yeah. it, it was a one-score game going into halftime, and it felt like That's Sagu. The of the third quarter. It felt like Sagu may have underestimated their opponent from Arkansas Baptist. These first three quarters of action. Thanks, Adam. Dr. Hayes, you presented the young, uh, Outstanding Young Alumnus Award the other day to a former student. How does that make you feel that your students are succeeding in their careers? I said in chapel yesterday how excited I was to be able to look at Facebook and see all the students and all the success that they've had throughout the years. Um, I was doing a paper, I was grading a paper the other day uh, for a present day student and they were listing the leaders that had impacted their lives. And six out of the ten of them were actually students I had about ten years ago that have now stepped up and become the leaders that others are following. And it, it makes an old man feel good. So thank you for you guys doing what you do. Dr. Hayes, if you're head coach, what play are you calling to start off the quarter? Right now I'm going to do a Jets sweep and uh, go around the end for just many yards. But they didn't do that. So I'm going to ask you, what's your favorite class this semester? My favorite class would probably be Authentic Christianity. Wow. I yeah. Mm -hmm. I, my professor is Dr. Hayes, Thank actually, you, if you know him. Yeah. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hayes. Back to you, Adam. <laughs> there we go. I thought he had pulled a Tony roll. Uh, he went in motion. I went, Dr. Hayes called it. He called it. Oh, he was so close with that oh, jet sweep. Oh, man. <laughs> Dr. And Hayes. then, and then, in in classic Dr. Hayes fashion, he turns the interview around on the interviewer, and then a little, a little, uh, a little rubbing elbows there with Dr. Hayes, saying the favorite class is the one he teaches. I mean, there was one right answer at that moment for Jazz, and she nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, anyone who ever took a Dr. Hayes class at 8 a.m. knows that you're going to get those questions, whether you're ready for them or not, and if you don't have an acceptable answer, he'll let you know about it. He, he, well, one of the greats, Dr. Hayes, and a longtime supporter of this football team. I remember being back here in 2007, him sitting through the all night long watching these games. He's been he's been a longtime supporter of this team. Yikes! A kind of a busted play there. Barlow kept the, uh -oh. the handoff. Was that a sack? No, it was a it was a designed. One. Okay, we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're not gonna not call that a sack. Just a regular old TFL. <laughs> because otherwise, that that'd be one of the rare ones for this Sagu offensive line. Bring up third and six after. A couple of nice runs there in a row. Moving the ball during the interview with Dr. Hayes. Sagu into Buffalo territory, now facing third down at six, like you said. Up 36 to six, 30 point lead here for the Lions. We'll hand it off to Rose. Rose gets brought down after a gain of one. Gonna make it fourth and five. Let's see what Coach Smith does here in Buffalo territory. Probably one of the situations where you go for it again, a little bit too long, as, as I call it the maroon zone, a little bit too long for a field goal. Plus you're not really trying field goals in a 30 point game. You know, you're just not looking for three points. Uh, just keep giving these, you know, these younger guys is pretty much Barlow is you know he's, he's handing off to a new guy let let that 
Let that motion keep happening. Oh, almost gets him off sides. Almost. Barlow back to pass on fourth down. Looking across the middle. Has his man for the first down just shy of the 20. Tyson Nanette picks up the first down on a nice pitch and catch there from Jordan Barlow. And Barlow hasn't had to do much read progression in this game as they have just dominated on the ground. But right there you see it. That veteran quarterback heads up play. Looking around. Check, check, check. And then finally finds this guy over the middle wide open. Easy pitch and catch, and the chains move again for the Lions. Just short of the red zone at the 21-yard line. Here's Barlow. Hands it off to Rose. Rose throws a stiff arm, lowers the shoulder, falls ahead for a gain of three on first down, make it second and seven. And you do love seeing the Kevian Rose get get those carries not only as a sophomore you know a guy who's you know going to be taken over eventually when Dudek graduates Dudek, Dudek's just a junior right now but also you never know what's going to happen you never know we're going to need him and that quarterback to running back you know that exchange is something you can't practice enough and so it's good to have you know Barlow getting used to another running back back there good day for it to really just establish multiple running backs plus never hurts to have a two-back system if, if Rose is ready to step up into it. Hands it off to Rose. Rose has the open field into the end zone. Sagu's sixth rushing touchdown of the day. Fifth rushing touchdown of the day. I forgot. It's Keaton Dudek has four. I assume it's on the ground, but it was a reception. Their fifth rushing touchdown of the day. And even that one was a very short pass that Dudek took in, but Rose... <laughs> Again, just attack the middle of the field. Sago hasn't done anything fancy, nothing to the corners. Just gash the middle, breaks one linebacker tackle. Nobody else is going to get him. He's got an offensive lineman. Yeah, you love seeing the big guy, Hayden Evans, going down the field with Rose the whole way to lay the last block. Clear the way. Snap, hold, and kick is up, and it is good. Sagu goes up. 43-6, to six. and they really have blown this one wide open ever since essentially the kickoff of the second half. The inadvertent, or the, uh, the rather the fair catch interference on the kickoff really set things in motion. There you see some updates. Langston out to a 30 to nothing lead over Lyon. Wesleyan, 57-7 over Wayland Baptist. And Louisiana College, 21-7 over the Aggies. Just the second quarter, uh, but that this might be the week, and that that put a notch in all of us for, for the lost column. Uh, I don't want to talk about it, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to go down. I'll take you down with me. That's oh, all I got. It, it man. Put that little blemish on, on perfection. <laughs> Can't be perfect. You got to gotta get a couple wrong. Ah, uh, that's fine. But yeah, Louisiana College looking for that. We, we said it. They played such a tough schedule. And they looked so good in some of those games. Yeah that maybe they're finally about to get that big breakthrough win here in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Notch one in the conference win column, the one that really matters, you know, getting getting that W in the conference win column. The other ones, you play such a different variety of teams from, you know, low NAI all the way up to hot, mid D1. You really can't judge those. Oh, no, ball drops it. He wanted to get a return going and instead is gonna set up the Buffalo offense inside their own 15 yard line. That second bobbled kickoff of the half for Hughes. The first one didn't mean anything since they ended up ruling the inadvertent whistle. But after setting the Buffaloes up with their best starting field position of the game, he's going to set them up with their worst starting field position of the game right here at the 12-yard line. Now 43-6. to six. Just time for more advancement. You know, Kristen Gamage has... Had his moments in this game, has looked so solid and was a big part of keeping this thing close through the first half. Unfortunately for him, it's just gone every which way wrong in the second. And the handoff goes to Newton. Newton almost gets his head taken off by Drake Rodriguez and Boston Reynolds. That's going to go for a decent chunk of yardage there on first down, make it second and five. Yeah, staying low, trying to get underneath those defenders. And Picks up enough to get you a little bit away. Anytime you're, you know, within 10, 15 yards of your own goal line, that feels real dangerous. So anytime you can get it back out closer to the 20, you feel a lot better about where you are. Second and five here for Christian Gamage. He is back to pass. He's got a clean pocket. He's going to roll out to his left as the pressure breaks down. 
and just flicks it out of bounds. It will be incomplete, bringing up third and five. Yeah, anytime the play is extended for that long, that just means mm -hmm. that these Sagu secondary have locked things down. You'll see it right here. Shut down, shut down. The only time it's worked on is on those quick hitters when they were able to cut away uh, from the outside man covering them. Right there, nothing doing. Uh, the Zagu secondary, so stout. Really after that first drive where they picked up two pass interference penalties and they had another long pass later. Other than that, they have been absolutely locked down. Only a couple of really, you know, electric runs from Gamage is what has moved the Buffaloes forward in this one. Back to pass is Gamage. He's taking a deep shot down the sideline. Has Hughes, passes broken up, almost oh. intercepted. Kevion Davis breaks it up on an island and coming in for the diving attempt was Trevion McNeil. Almost came away with it. That's going to bring up fourth and five. And that's the second elite pass defended by Davis in this game. Just going up, getting a full hand on it, making sure the receiver has no shot at pulling it in. And yeah, that was almost an interception on the deflection. And it will bring out the punt unit deep in their own end, sure to give Sagu good field position. And Sagu's been bringing the pressure all game as well. But we'll see what they do right here. They've been very close to blocking one. They almost get there again, this one end over end. Rao running back to it. He's going to bring it in right at the 30-yard line, makes a man miss. And it gets a reaction out of the crowd. Still on his feet, past the 45. Good return to a race. What was a good punt? Punting from inside the end zone, getting it all the way out to the Sagu 30. But Adrian Rao does a good job of making a man miss, getting to the corner. Another little stutter step inside to pick up those extra five, six yards. So Sagu will end up with pretty good field position out to the 46-yard line. I was trying to catch yep. who the quarterback is here. New quarterback, yep. Dylan Fredoloso, into the game. We saw him a couple of weeks ago in another blowout victory. So all, all experience time now for the second unit of, for the Lions. And he will hand it off, looking for some room to run. And it's looking like number 37, Junior Avery Garcia on the carry. All new look, but nothing about the strategy changes. Hand the ball off, go up the middle. <laughs> it's two yards there on first down, makes it second and eight. Of course, if you're Fred Aloso and you're in a situation, you know it's a little uncouth to be passing up 37, <laughs> but you want to get some throws in. You're like, hey, come on, let me, let me throw the ball around a little bit here. I don't want us to hand it off for the rest of the game. We'll see what they do. There's still nine minutes left. We'll see what they decide to do. They hand it off again. Up the field, that's Rose. Rose keeps the feet churning, has enough for the first down and moves the chains and gives Sagu a fresh set of downs. And Rose has looked really good. Runs hard. And his time spelling uh, Keaton Dudek so far. Dudek hasn't been seen since his nine yard touchdown run, kind of safely put the Lions up by 23. And Rose has come out and tacked on two of his own. He, run, he runs really hard. Yeah, he, he he's very, very strong. Doesn't quite have that elusiveness as Dudek, but just a powerful runner who's been fighting through a lot of tackles. First and 10, here's Fred Oloso takes a snap, hands it off around the edge. He's got a lot of room to work with. He's gonna lower the shoulder, get bit, get, but get brought down. That time the, the handoff went to number 88. Not every day you see a, uh, number 88 getting handoffs from the backfield. It was Javante Harper. And that's something the Lions do even with their first unit, just getting the ball to their receivers any way they can, even if they're not throwing it. Uh, we saw a handoff earlier in the game to Jamal Long. We saw one to, uh, I believe it was Zachariah Johnson got a handoff at one point yep. as well. Yep. Uh, and, and then I, I almost forgot, this game started in the Wildcat. That felt like so long ago. Lions' did, first two, yes. two plays started in the Wildcat. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they, they love getting the ball into the hands of their playmakers any way they can. Here's Fred Oloso. He's going to hand it off. Cutting up field. There he is again. There's Harper. Harper lowers the shoulder. He picks up a first down. Javante Harper, the junior wide receiver. Wide receiver, but just lining up straight in that running back position. No motion or anything. Sitting right there to the quarterback's right. Lions will let the clock tick as we reach the halfway point of the fourth quarter. Oh, yeah. Clock is their best friend right now. The win 
firmly in hand here on homecoming Saturday. First and 10, here's Fred Aloso, two stacked to either side. He's gonna hand it off again. Here's Harper, Harper throwing some stiff arms, keeping the feet moving, gets five there on first down. Makes it second and five. Everybody getting a chance right now to run right at the center of this second Buffalo's defense. The whole way he was dragging number 51, Patrick Pratt, who got into the backfield and got his arms around his leg, but just kept churning forward. You love getting to evaluate these younger guys, these guys who haven't had a chance to play too much, and Javante Harper is taking advantage of his opportunity right now. Absolutely. Second and five here. Harper in the backfield here with Fred Oloso. Gonna fake the handoff. He's back to throw. Here you go, Tim. Looking deep down the middle of the field. Looking for his man. Incomplete. A flag does come out. The intended receiver was tight end Khalil Jenkins. And it looked to be a pretty good ball there by Fred Aloso. Just uh, a little too good a coverage by the defensive back. Yeah, it was a solid throw. It was on target. And that's really what's going to draw the pass interference. It was so well put. Oh, wait. Well, wait to call this. Oh, hang on. Coach Smith is not happy about something. Ineligible, ineligible receiver down downfield. Field. Another, another ineligible receiver downfield penalty here for so Sagu. It'll be offsetting penalties. It looked like he was given the decline signal at first, but he was what he was saying was uh, offsetting. So, so that's going to move Sagu back. Well, no, it'll just rain second and five. Offsetting penalties. Oh, well, oh well, I didn't see the yes, offsetting Yes, yeah, the, yeah. The referee's microphone was not working, uh, but there was an ineligible man, man downfield. As you see him standing right there and the pass interference, but that ineligible man downfield erases what would have been a big penalty. So just replay the downs. And this time they hand it off. Here's Javante Harper. Harper spinning out of a tackle and has enough for the first down. Moves the chains again. So Sagu eating up a bunch of this clock. Now with six, under six and a half left to play. So on the stat sheet, Fertiloso does not have a pass attempt yet. So we, they need to get another one to him. Even though you're up by 37, you got to let you got to let your backup quarterback uh, <laughs> throw a pass. Let him get it out there. I like it. I like it. First and ten here for the Lions as the clock keeps moving. Three out wide to the left of Fertiloso, one to the right. Harper in the backfield. Here's back to pass. He, he pumps, steps up. He's going to take off. He's going to get just a couple, maybe one yard there on first down. Looks like they wanted to get a double move going, and Fred Aloso wasn't there, so he took off. Yeah, he's going to shoot up, get whatever he can there, and bring up a second and nine, and most importantly, just keep that clock moving. Wind down this game. That... The Lions have completely taken over here in the second half, putting 30 points on the board. Now it's scoring 30 to zero, not yeah. giving up points either in the second half. Here's Fred Oloso on second down. He hands it off. Harper lowers the sh lowers the shoulder and lays the boom on a defender up top. Wow. Yeah. That was a collision. We're pretty high up, so it means something when we hear the uh, collision of pads, and I heard that pop up here. High up and through our headsets, we heard that collision. <laughs> wow. That is violent running by Javante Harper. First and goal, yeah. So, I mean, Harper, Rose, Dudek, it doesn't matter. Sagu just having their way in the ground game today. As we predicted, they might. It didn't quite work as well as they were hoping in the first half, but in the second, it's, it's been everything they thought it could be. The handoff to Harper. Harper up the middle to the end zone. Stretches. Touchdown, Sagu. Javante Harper, the third running back to score on the ground today. And that puts Sagu up big, 49-6, to six, looking for their 50th point on the afternoon. Something that it only took Texas Wesleyan 30 minutes to do today. <laughs> and you saw the stat right there. Sagu now well over 300 yards rushing on the game. Everybody's getting some in the, in the backfield right now. They're, all, they're all getting their turn yep. to, to turn the ball. Snap, hold, kick is low, but it is good. Kieran Woodley. Puts point number 50 on the board for the Lions. We are going to go live to our sideline reporter who is 
down in the stands with our men's basketball team. It's going to be a fun interview. Jazz, down to you and the Sagu men's basketball team. Thanks, Adam. I'm here with a couple players from the men's basketball team. The team reached the semifinals of the national championship last year. How excited are you guys to open up the season in a couple weeks? We're very excited. We made it to the Final Four last year. We went home a little bit earlier than we would like to, so we've been working hard every day just to get to that over that final hump and so make it to the championship. So we're really excited. There's no homecoming last year, but we're back in this environment. How do you guys feel to be back? Uh, I, it's really exciting to be back in front of the fans and everything. Uh, I know it, it makes us feel like we're playing for something with everybody cheering us on and everything, so that's what I have to say. Oh, man, it's just great being back out here. You know, it's a great atmosphere, great environment for us. And, yeah, I feel like it's dope. Awesome, you know, awesome. Like, the energy radiating from the stands, from the fans, from the alum, you know, they paved the legacy for us, and we're just trying our hardest to keep that legacy flowing, keep it going, you know. It's definitely crazier than I remember. There's a lot more hype, a lot more people. Everyone seems like they're having a lot of fun, enjoying themselves. Thanks, guys. Back to you, Adam. Thank you, Jazz. Thank you, the men's basketball team. I got, Tim, I got to tell you, I'm jealous of every single one of their pairs of shoes. <laughs> they were oh, so awesome. <laughs> I, I, I figured you, you were like picking to go, okay, yeah. I want, I, want, I want every single one of those. Tell you what, that basketball, obviously, what a run last year getting to the Fab Four out there in Kansas City. And they seem geared up again this year as well. The Delton Deal has put together a, a powerhouse over there at the Schaefer Center. And it won't be much long before they'll be uh, coming across your, your oh, internet yeah. airwaves. Absolutely. And that is worth watching every single game. <laughs> Absolutely. First down carry there for the Buffalo's offense to start this drive uh, goes nowhere. That one was Russell Nance, and he loses four yards. Makes it second and 14. And for the Buffaloes in this game, you know, obviously, now you're down big. Now you're down 50 to six uh, in a situation that you've seen yourself in a lot. But I go back to that first half, and I mentioned a minute ago, you know, sitting in, in the stands in the rain with Clancy Hayes back in 2007 watching Sagu football. There were a lot of games like that back then with Sagu football where they'd go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a really good team in the first half. And you're like, oh, we're down 10-7. Mm -hmm. We're down 14-10. We're, down we're in this. And in the second half, things will get away from you. And then one year, that just kind of stopped happening. You started hanging with teams in the second half. Then you started winning in the second half, building a program. This is a very, very injury, young. Injury. Time out. It's got an injury. Very, very young Arkansas Baptist team that has obviously struggled a lot this year, has not been able to get a win, and those losses have come by significant <clears throat> margins. But this is, in fact, the building block today to say, hey, we were right there at the half. We, were, we played a full half of football against a solid NAIA squad. We're down 13 to 6. And we just don't have quite, quite of the pieces yet to hang with them in the second half. So even though it's going to be a lopsided loss at the end of the day, I, I do th I, I've seen this before. I've seen a team grow over the process of a half a decade to get there, and it's this Sagu Lions team. And I, you know, to where now they are competitive every single year in the Sooner Athletic Conference. I mean, it's not going to happen tomorrow. It may not happen next year. But yeah, yeah, I think you see some building blocks for this Arkansas Baptist squad. And I think it, it starts... It starts with the quarterback position and although he is down on the field right now in Christian Gamage uh, it looks like they have a good one he looks like he's a he's a gamer he, he, he can get it done on the feet if he can figure it out through the air be a little bit more efficient I think that they're going to be they're going to be okay they're going to be just fine and he is a freshman so he's got a lot to learn from uh, it, it, you get your guy at quarterback and anything can happen and I will tell you this he's already athletic he's athletic and he's got that ability to turn some, nothing into something in the backfield. And obviously, you hate seeing him down on the field right now. That can't be taught. That can't be learned. Right. You can't get yep. necessarily better at that. That comes so naturally. What you can get better at is zipping that ball in there, throwing good passes, make, going through your read progressions. So as a freshman, that's something he can get better at in the coming years. And then he already has that staple to his attack. Well, you look at where it started, the, the needle started the shift for Sagu. Reed Golson came in at yep. quarterback, who reminds me a, a little bit of Christian Gamage with how athletic he is on the ground. Gamage is honestly probably faster than Golson ever was, but Golson was just, he was just a winner, kind of like Barlow yep. is a winner. He, he, he does what he can to get his team in position to win games. They go from, they go from Golson to C.J. Collins, who wins games because of his elite arm talent. And it just takes that guy up front as we have a new quarterback in here for 
the Buffaloes. He delivers a strike there on first down. The lefty coming in, Laron Rosborough. But you get that guy at the quarterback position, the leader of your team, and he can make things happen. And I feel like they have a good one, at least in, in, a, in a team where it's their first year of the Sooner Athletic Conference, they're in the probation year, you know, yep. this year, quote unquote, for them, it doesn't really count. Yeah. And it, it, it's more of a tryout. I think they got to be thrilled with what they have at quarterback. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's what you want to build around. A guy who, who has that ability, because we saw that with Reed Golson, that wasn't, this, that wasn't a team that was going out winning a ton of games, but they were in a lot of games. Yep. And then one year they did start winning games. I believe it was Golson who was quarterbacking when they had their first winning season. Uh, in a year that they technically ended yeah. up winning the CSFL. Yep. Uh, thanks to some postseason uh, th uh, things that sussed out. Shenanigans. Uh, they, the, <laughs> they ended up technically winning the CSFL yep. that year. Yep. Uh, and it was Golson who, who kind of led that process. So when you have a guy who's super athletic, Again, that's something you can absolutely build your team around because you can build anything around an athletic quarterback. You can build a passing offense oh, yeah. around an athletic absolutely. quarterback. You can build a rushing offense. You can build a quick strike offense. That it, it, it's the Swiss Army knife. As obviously, there's a turnover on downs there. And Caleb Welch is going to come in for quarterback now. So Fred Aloso gets his one drive, leads a touchdown, doesn't have to throw any passes to do it. And now it's going to be Welch who comes in with 241 remaining and the Lions up 50-6. to six. He will hand it off, throwing a stiff arm. Then getting, brought in, getting, getting brought down, Avery Garcia. Pretty good run there on first. Four yards, makes it second and six. And the Lions roll deep at running back. We've already kind of known that. We get to see the, the, the two deep. We can see the depth chart. We know they have a lot of running backs. And I think they're all going to get some yards to their stat sheet today. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Second and six as we approach the two-minute mark. you got to think Sagu will take these... Seconds all the way down if they can. Yep, Welch just letting Welch the clock letting run. letting the clock run. Takes the snap. We'll hand it off. Cuts it back up the middle. Lowers the shoulder. We'll move the chains as we are under two minutes. Again, that, again, Avery Garcia. There is a flag. Because why not? <laughs> That's this kind of been... If it weren't for some of the interesting swings this game had, penalties would After be the, the defining point. feature. Dead ball, sportsmanlike conduct, offense number 16, 15-yard penalty. Result of the play is first down. Paul Odidi getting called for the unsportsmanlike conduct. That'll set the Lions back. Not that, you know, pretty much everything is totally academic at this point. The Lions could actually just kneel down, I believe, and run the clock out from here on out. I imagine they'll hand it off a few more times. Might as well let Avery Garcia get a few more touches, a few more snaps into Caleb Welch's hands. Welch takes the snap, hands it off to Garcia. Garcia being held on by his undershirt and he's gonna fall forward for one yard. Oh, look, the shirt ripped as it stretched in the hand of the defender. Those undershirts are the new tearaway jerseys, that's because you, you just kind of keep going, and, and, they, and they will break away for you, luckily, after a while. That makes it second and nine. Saggy will let, just let the clock run and get the play call in, and this might just be victory formation time. Coach Smith is yelling in the play call. 15 seconds left on the play clock. And they said that we'll stay in shotgun. Second and nine here, so Sagu can run effectively one more play here. They shouldn't have to run another one. They may have to. We'll see. Garcia carrying a defender with him. Wow, keeps the feet moving and moves the chains. And that is a fitting end to this one as Sagu moves the chains, gets a first down on the back of Garcia. And then a injured Buffalo's defender, unable to get up off the turf. Anthony Island Injury. is the defender who was Timeout. slow to get up. And not what you want to see on the literal last play of the game. Anybody getting banged up on either side as the clock will stop, but that was I'm certain that was the last play of the game as it was an injury timeout, so the clock will resume running as soon as he's up. And he does get up on his own power. It's good to see. I imagine a game like this, it's been just brutal for everybody on that defense. A lot of hard hitting. It stayed humid all day, so 
Nobody's feeling, nobody's feeling great under there right now physically. As soon as he's off the field, I imagine they'll blow the whistle and that should be it. Offense will step back out on the field, but they don't need to run another play. And the clock will start again as we are at 25 seconds. Segu again doesn't have to run a play. We should see the teams start to line up at the 50-yard line as they do the post-game handshake. They may run another play. They will run another play. Here's Garcia. Garcia cuts it upfield. He's got a lot of. He's got a little uh, bit of space he here. Gets brought down. He wanted himself a touchdown. Uh, but <laughs> I, I get it. I, I thought, get it. I thought he's going to pop up and call a timeout for a second. <laughs> he wanted that so bad. I get it. I get it. That's going to do it for this one. Sagu fifty, Arkansas Baptist. The Buffaloes with six scoreless in the second half was Arkansas Baptist. That's a, a tough pill to swallow on the opposite sideline as you get on the bus to head back to Arkansas. But Sagu with a big bounce back victory after a shootout last week against Arizona Christian. This has got to feel good. It's got to feel good, especially with uh, your next game against Texas Wesleyan, who looked like a juggernaut today. Yeah, it it's a, it's a, feels good because of how you handled the second half. You took, you know, as you said, first half, it was feeling pretty dicey here. Up 13-6 to six against a team that you knew you should really beat. As you see some highlights there from the game. And now let me tell you about Keaton Dudick. I mean, what a game from him. Uh, a, a a memorable game. A game that's going to stick in his head for a long time. But you absolutely took care of business in the second half. Put up 37 points. The defense actually is going to outscore uh, the Buffaloes two to nothing in the second yep. half. The defense pulled in a safety and allowed no points, and they really locked down in the first half. The Buffaloes were consistently getting across the 50-yard line. That only happened once in the second half. The rest of the time, they were locked down, forcing those three and outs. And Sagu's going to come away. Always, always got to get your win on homecoming. Even if you're going to go one and nine in a season, you got to get a win yeah, on absolutely, homecoming. Absolutely, absolutely. Keaton Dudek, you see, over 230 yards all purpose on offense and four touchdowns, 10 yards a carry. An insane game from Keaton Dudek. And, and we've called his name a lot this season, but this was his best game. Yeah. By I, far. I mean, look, look at that. 14 rushes for 163 yards. Doing some quick math in my head. That's about 11 yards a carry. Just, just about. Yeah. Just about 11 yards a carry. And then over uh, 20 yards a, a catch. So just every time he gets the ball in his hands, it's just a chunk. Overall, Sagu, 357 rushing yards. You knew you could today. You knew that was going to be your bread and butter today. And it absolutely was. That means you had almost 200 rushing yards blowing the guys not named Keaton Dude. Absolutely. So, yeah. Like I said, everybody in the backfield got a chance to, to pick up some chunks today. Then for the Buffaloes, 213 total yards. But as I recall, that was somewhere around 160, 165, I believe, at half. Yeah. So yeah. only around 50 total yards in the second half. And a lot of that was on one play. Yeah. on the scramble by, by Gamage. And then 13 penalties for 105 yards. Anytime your penalty yards match your passing yards and just erase that entirely, you, you know you got some stuff to clean up. As I mentioned a moment ago, you know, <laughs> nobody's taking a picture of the scoreboard on the way out to put on their, you know, no, yeah. put, put, put on their, yeah. their dorm room wall let's see what's the motivation. But you think back to that first half and, and you see the building blocks. You see the building blocks of a football team. And looking right here at their roster, I see nothing but FR. A couple of young, JRs and a couple young. of sophomores. Yep, Everybody else straight across the board, true freshmen. Let's take a look at some of the current games going on as our game has wrapped up. Langston 30 to nothing, the final over Lyon. Texas Wesleyan put up 60 against Wayland Baptist in the fourth quarter, 60 to 7. 28-14, uh, Louisiana College beating Oklahoma Panhandle State. The Aggies are in trouble. I mean, that, that's an upset. That, that looks like a huge upset. It's a good little ball game there right now. Then across, oh, also Lane, uh, 62 nothing of Texas College. Sagan was 50 to 6, and then there it is. The game tonight, yep. Well, well, well I don't know if I'm staying up that late. I mean, come on. It's I, only I, 9 o'clock, Tim. Come I, on, man. I, I, I'm staying for the whole game. I can't okay. stay up till midnight. Right. I, I'm, I'm right. old. I'm old. You don't watch those Rangers games when they go to Los Angeles oh, no. and play the Angels? Oh, oh, no. oh Tim. No, not, not, not since oh, I was like 21 Tim. years old, man. <laughs> Let's take a look at the uh, Sooner Athletic Conference standings uh, as of today, as of right now, as we finished uh, this game against the Arkansas Baptist Buffaloes. Actually, it looks like our sideline reporter is live with a couple of uh, 
a couple of Sagu Lions. Looks like they're getting ready. Uh, let's just take a quick look at these standings before we go down there. Ottawa, of course, still leading. Langston 4-0 after a big win today. And again, tonight, Arizona Christian, Ottawa, uh, big game. Those are really the ones you want to pay attention to. Texas Wesleyan also hanging tough in there. Uh, it's, a, it's a close race right now. Wesleyan's going to come in 3-1 and one in conference next week. 3-1 uh, overall. Sagu's going to be 3-2 and two overall, looking to get back even with conference. We'll talk about that one here in just a second after done with the interviews, but that's going to be a ball game next Saturday. Our sideline reporter, Jazz Williams, is with defensive players of the game and in drake rodriguez and quarterback jordan barlow jazz down to you thanks adam jordan you had a great game today how does it feel to win big on your last homecoming feels great feels great we came out started a little bit slow and executed and uh, got a big win it was real nice a lot of fun drake what do you think caused the success on the defensive side of the ball today right, success um so we actually played together in unity and and we trusted one another this game. So whenever that happens, we just come together and we can't be broken. Good game, guys, and congratulations. Back to you, Adam. Thanks, Jazz. Thank you, Drake. Thank you, Jordan. Man, I'll tell you, Drake played, <laughs> Rodriguez plays so violently on the field, but is so soft-spoken. It's, it's crazy. Can you talk to him? You know, togetherness, hope, <laughs> love, that's what it's all about. Now, get out of my way while I throw four people <laughs> in the backfield and toss the quarterback through the uprights. That's crazy. That's crazy. So, thank you for watching the Sagu Sports Network. Our upcoming broadcast this Thursday, uh, soccer versus John Brown. The women kick off at 1 and the men kick off around 3.30 immediately after that. So, come watch the uh, Sagu Lions take on the Golden Eagles and then as far as football goes, we're right back here in Waxahachie next Saturday for the team that just hung 60 on Wayland Baptist. Uh, and then some possibly, still in the fourth quarter of that one. Uh, they they traveled down 287, down here to Waxahachie to face Sagu. That's going to be a good one. That's a big rivalry here for Sagu. Yeah. That's going to be a really good ball game. Two teams kind of fighting to see who's the leader of that second tier in the Sooner Thunder Conference. Tune in for that one. You Absolutely. do not want to miss that ball. Absolutely. You can watch today's game along with hundreds of other on-demand anytime on the Sagu Sports Network YouTube channel. Be sure to like this video, hit the subscribe button. For game notes, news, highlights, and more, follow the Sagu Sports Network on Twitter and Facebook. Final score again, the Sagu Lions 50 and the Arkansas Baptist Buffaloes 6. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, it was all because of our incredible student team. 90% of our crew at the Sagu Sports Network is made up of college students getting experience as they prepare prepare for their careers in live and broadcast production. I'm Adam Ferguson with my partner, Tim Roberts, and on behalf of our sideline reporter, Jazz Williams, our entire crew headed up by producer James Lex and director John Cookman. So long from Waxahachie, Texas, and thank you for watching the Sagu Sports Network.